Nice. Can you walk faster? <laughs> it's too fast, all right? You can go faster? Okay. Cool. Even Please. faster. Faster. Oh, it's crashing. <laughs> Whoa. It's too fast. <laughs> Don't. Nice. It's That's okay, very no? good. Uh, try again, more, even faster. So hi, so who are you? Selena. Selena, what is the company? Uh, LKK and LKKSCM. So LKK yeah. is uh, Shenzhen? Yeah, we're from Shenzhen. And, and this is real product? This is the correct product. It's real? Of course it's real. For it's sale? Great. For sale? Yeah, uh huh. But we're a product design and development company. So all of these products you see here is that we develop for the different companies. Uh, sorry, um, is this following your phone or? Uh, no. It no. Is just the cable for the speaking. <laughs> so, um, but how is it following you or is it following the phone or? Yeah, no? following my phone is connected to my. That phone. phone. Yeah. So, exactly. if you give me the phone. <laughs> it okay. will be run away. <laughs> it will follow me. No. No. Yeah, because it's already recognized my dresses. That is why it can follow me. F recognize your dress. Dresses and also their sensors and the app in my phone. So the two functions together, that is why it can follow yeah. me. Yeah. Can you clip the microphone there? Not, not move you so much. Okay. And uh, uh, what is this? Uh, this is now the, the e bike. We just take it out and show all of the mechanical that what we have right now. So you do an e-bike? Yeah, not only e-bike, there's so many different products that are what we're working right now. Uh, what, is, uh, what is this? There. This is a mechanical device that we're showing the mechanical design what we have right now. So right now we're cooperating with many startups or some of the new technology companies to focus on to make the new products for them. <laughs> so quick. <laughs> Sorry, it's, uh, it's very cool. Can you open this bag and I see what's inside? It's water inside. Full of water? Yeah, because we need to keep it stable. <laughs> Can I if see? If it's empty, it cannot be working very well. So Can you open it? Yep, sure. Wait. Okay. Ouch! Be careful your fingers. Okay. okay now. So okay. there's some battery and some sensor inside. So all those things is just same as a luggage, nothing very special. There's only a little bit here. Yeah, the battery is there and the sensor right there. And here is nothing. Yeah, there's it's only nothing. here. Yeah, it's common package there. So it's very simple. But How heavy is this? The sensor. How heavy is the bag without uh, the This water? is about the... Four kilo. kilo. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's check some other stuff. Okay. Uh, you can, can you make you can it work it again? Here, okay. You can stop it there. <coughs> can you follow me? Okay. Come. I oh, know. I'm <laughs> the other side. Okay. No. Cool. Can you walk faster? Hey, want you to be faster? Walking faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run, run. Try running. Running faster, faster. <laughs> faster, running. No? Okay. It's too cool. If you're in a rush at the airport, you look too cool. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's pretty convenient, right? Can I have one? Why not? How much is price? Uh, the price is just nearly five hundred dollars. It's okay. It's, it's cheaper than an iPhone. <laughs> I think it's much cooler than an we iPhone. We have a much more cool stuff than okay. this one. What? But we will bring to the market version in a one month. What? Uh, one by one, this is kind of the smart locker, which can track your car. For example, you can rent your parking place to others, and it can lock where it can find where you park your car. 
So it's easy to find your car by this device. Cool. What is this stuff? Uh, this is uh, something can clean the islands directly, automatically. And we also have some, this stuff is also cool, it's a mask. You see, it's a mask. But it also can control your computer too. It can do what? Yeah, it can control the PPT like this, by the plane. So it's so easy and convenient, right? Oh, so it's a mouse? Yeah, it's a mouse. It's a mouse, and then boom, it's a thingy. Oops. Yeah, yeah, just press it like this. My, my camera go wrong. Yeah, okay. change the page. So you close it, mouse, mm -hmm. and then this. Look, look. Right. Mouse, okay. And there's some the tracker. We don't need the Wi-Fi, don't need the Bluetooth. So the when 3G, you 3G, 4G? Not 4G. They just connect you to the outer space. So when you're got lost in some remote or unknown place, they can track you easily to get connect some to the answer. space. Sorry? You connect to Chinese satellites? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's some the LED screen that you can show the mechanical design. So cool. You know it's LED not the screen. screen. It is screen. Look. Oh. Right? So this is the back. It's it looks like a drone. Exactly. And it's much lighter than the traditional one. So we get a lot of changes on them. But why you do all this? Do you have like skills? Yeah, of course. We have about 150 engineering team. Are you an engineer? No, but I'm a designer. We have 1,500 designers. How many engineers? 150 engineers. And 1,500 designers? Yeah. In so fact, you have 10 designers for every engineer? <laughs> yeah. Really? Of course. So it's we're very much LKK, a design company. The largest uh, industry design company in China. And we're from the supply chain management branch office. Which one you design? Uh, my design I didn't bring to here today. But I, because we have another booth in other place. Maybe later you will come. About what is your design? I designed the medical device and also the industry equipment. Too. Makeup device? Medical. For example, medical. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, this device, in fact, you see maybe it's just It's easy. a brain scanner, right? Yeah, it's a brain waves. But when you wear it, it can take a picture automatically. It's by checking your mind brain. Picture brain of what? Taking picture by your brain waves. It can monitor what you want it. For example, you're just thinking, okay, I want to take a picture, right? And then you wear this device. It can take a picture automatically. So you just think. Yeah, you don't need a cell phone or something else. Because there's a camera. <laughs> so you think picture and it will take it. Right. You don't need to do some movements. What is this karaoke? Yeah, there's some the karaoke you can charge with the cable. And then you can sing it. Does it make you sing better? Of course. You can listen your singing directly. It's uh, auto-tune. Yeah, right. It's tuning your, your voice. Yeah, make this you is, sing like something. This is similar deal. functions too, but this is for the the label. You see, the label. To do what? Lab label? What does that mean? The label. It's a famous ah, Chinese Lenovo. brand too. Yeah. You work with Lenovo. Yeah, a lot. We're working with EQ and the Nestel and the LG and this kind of both of big companies too. Is this like a flying? Uh, Spaceship? Yeah, the shape is, I mean, the design in my nation is from that. But this one How's is it work? connected together. Yeah. How's it work? Usually, they should be like this. How? It can stop the, by the mag magnetic. Initial? Yeah, but no, it doesn't work because someone broke it this morning. It's an uh, uh, American, right? No. <laughs> broke it. No. It's not all right. Uh, <coughs> trade war. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's so, what is sense. this? This is just a heat. I mean, for As the hair dryer. Hair Can dryer. I take this one? Of course. <laughs> it's very compact. It's yeah. a high high power. Yeah, and uh, you can see the designs are also good. Or this just, one. Is, I don't have hair, so it's not so good for me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. So this one is a charging robot. It's very lovely one, and we're in cooperation with one company named Shimalaya. Shimalaya. Yeah, it's one of the largest voice control company in China, similar to Siri, the function. 
Is it from the mountains of Shimalaya? No. <laughs> it's a company's name. It's Planform, which have all of the contents and the voice control. So we're working with them to make this robot. You know, for this company, they have one problem. It's a platform, right? They only focus on com comments or contents. So they need a hardware to make all of the contents could be available. Not only relied on the cell phone. Before they relied on cell phone or tablet to download the app, but now they have the own hardware. Is this also flying in space or something? What is this? No, this is all light and the AI speaker. You can see some speakers right here. Can you show it? Uh, it's near to be charged now. No power? Uh, yeah, no power. You only charge it in China. And this can be taught by the face generator. When you talk about this, it can change the power, the lens. Did and you say darkness. face generator? Um, it's face? not. They have sensor inside like that, but it's near charger. Later, maybe I can show you. You can just change the lights. It's got gesture control. Exactly. Maybe later we can show you. So you can use it with very dirty hands. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's true. And this is a one cup machine. This machine, and you can see you can put the coffee and this can of both of the things inside. So we will make some coffee? Yeah, coffee, tea, both are okay. One cup. You can Nest coffee? Good, sure. You see? But it's one cup. Yeah. Okay. In can fact, you also you do a smart toothbrush? Of course. Yeah, this is we developed for another company's toothbrush. This device is cool, very too, but you didn't try. You see? Can you it, try it? Of course, he can try it. So that's why we can start <coughs> this one. Uh, and it's pretty uh, light. The luggage can follow you on the bicycle. Oh, there's a display. You see? Yeah, okay, you, go. Hey, stop. Uh, we no, 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 stop you can continue both. Okay. I hope you can do both. Go to you. Can no, no, both. Both. <laughs> try it. Yeah, that's cool. This is an electronic bag. Yeah, no accident. Here's a lawsuit country. <laughs> oh, this is too cool. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have your luggage follow you on a bicycle. Why not? It's just, uh, yeah, you can come this way. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just keep going. M2. It's called the M2. You have a cool job. No, you have a cool job. Okay, keep going. This is a 2020 uh, CES with a bicycle, electric bicycle, with a nice LED display. <coughs> He's got some luggage just following him. And uh, you can also ride up the hill. It's, it's totally cool. No accidents. No crash. So, um, I was just saying that your friend has a very cool job. Yeah, he did. But you too. Thank you. There's another device you didn't <coughs> see yet. Come I just here. want to follow him for one more second. Okay, sure. Because this is uh, too crazy. Okay, what did I not see? This one. This is kind of the earphone, but yeah. it can stop when you're sleeping. So when you're sleeping, just wear this one. Maybe you're driving or you're working, you feel sleepy or tired. Just wear this one. It can wake you up at once. So, so what? You, is it earphone for sleeping? It's anti-sleeping earphone. It's a sleeping s earphone. Not for make you sleepy, it's to wake you up when you feel sleepy. <laughs> ah, so sometimes in the office, yeah, or your driving. boss wants you to work, but mm -hmm. you fall asleep. Yeah. So you will always wake up when you fall asleep. No, really? Is that what it is? <laughs> no. Just no? let you wake up. And okay. you also can enjoy the music too, because this earphone is very good quality about the speakers. Now, maybe you can use it. Um, while watching a very boring TV show. Oh, really? That's his <laughs> And you fall asleep and it wakes you up instantly and you continue watching. Perfect. Good yeah. idea. Okay. <laughs> it's like for a Game of Thrones or something. Mm -hmm. I'm joking, it's not boring. <laughs> and <clears throat> what is this? It's a kind of the robot for charging because you know the charging in the kindergarten that that playing around, right? It's darting in the hands. So it's kind of the robot. 
washing and, hands? Yeah, there's some liquid come outside and clean your face, clean your hands. Oh, nice. So just for charging. It's a hand wash. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is a drone in the box. Yeah, this is a kind of the drone for the charging too, not for the I mean artificial this kind of field, just for the chargers. It can about the eight meters like this. That robot is very cool in that. It got the best sale in China. It's very popular, it's very cheap. Not cheap in fact. It's 100 RMB. So you know this one before? No, I, I think so. <laughs> How much is cost? It is about $80. Like this. $82. $82, yeah. Okay, and uh, you this have one? more? This is your Bluetooth this, speaker? Yeah, this is a dual screen. So when you have a lot of work to do, you can change the difference screen at the same time this one i do the excel you can close it of course don't break it yeah okay. so it just goes behind mm -hmm. and boom it's a type c connect with the type c yeah exactly so i can take it out yeah then it would you see only one now only one yeah but i can connect my phone uh not the phone now we have another version now it's not a phone right now Okay, yeah, try to connect just to try. Okay, let me see. We have another product which can could work as that, not on the cell phone now. So this time we will bring another version. Okay, but it's Type C support. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a, okay. Okay, cool. And uh, here's your Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, so AI, not Bluetooth, AI speakers. Where, where is the AI? This is, we just show the mechanical design. So we separated all of the coupons and the mechanical parties into the different one. We show all of our ability on the mechanical design. This is the PCBA you can see from here. It's the PCB, this is where the AI resides. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, what's inside? The speaker. Cool, so uh, it says, uh, your idea. Uh -huh. You make it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that means uh, Americans or other people, Europeans, yeah. maybe have ideas and uh, you, in China, yeah. you make it. Exactly. No matter what kind of the products. Because every year we launch about 3,000 different products for the different company. Big company or startup will work on everyone come to us. So you are a big design house. We cannot say that we're a design company because we have the development, engineering, we also do the supply chain management. So they offer the idea, we will make the products design and also the mechanical design, electronic development, prototyping and mass production. So everything we can but do. That's what a design how does, no? Sir? <coughs> design house is not only design, it's uh, yeah, design hardware, house, they only electronics. Do design. We do all of the things from design to manufacturing. DFM, including everything. And is a good price? Of course, this is why so many American partners come to us. Which one? Uh, Cerebag, do you know that? Cell Bank? Cerebag. Cerebag. Yeah, it's kind of the medical device. They're in the Silicon Valley and it's focused on checking the waves. Chicken your... waves? No, <laughs> checking brain waves. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, and other one? what kind other of one? problem? Other company, many? Uh, we started now, so there will be more and more come to us. The reason why this kind of the American startup or American company come to us because we can shorten the time for them. When they finish one product in America, maybe it takes at least one year or two years. By us, maybe we can only... One or two weeks. Cannot. Five months or four months like this. And they reduce a lot of the cost by all of the resources in China. Do you have office in Europe or USA or in, I'm only in China? I'm trying to open one in California this year. You? Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to employ and interview some people right now. Anybody so, is smart enough? Sorry? Anybody is smart enough in California for um, to work with? Of course. I'm just selecting the, who is the best one so far. Maybe you can recommend some good people to us too. They can uh, contact you. Maybe they watch this video and they're like, hey, I want to work in the California office, Silicon cool. Valley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, near that area. Near the Google? 
Uh, Donia to Stony. Near the Apple? Beth Ari or San Francisco, both are okay. Not sure. Okay. You're not sure yet when the, where the office will be? Uh, Silicon Valley or the San Francisco, both are okay. You will have two offices? Yeah, this is our plan. <coughs> Many people want to do like crowdfunding, new idea, and mm -hmm. put on the crowdfunding, mm -hmm. and then they partner with you to make it real. Uh, in fact, before crowdfunding, they already come to us. For example, they just have one idea, I mean concept stage. So they come to us, they tell what kind of the products or I mean functions, features they want to come to. And then we will give the feedbacks or final proposal. For example, how long to finish from design to manufacturing. And what is the cost on the each stage. And what kind of the research you should have. So we give all of these things to them. And this kind of startup, they can decide if they can they wanted to work with us or they can go on this within the budget. So if it's over the budget, they can give up this project and start it or not a new one. So in fact, they come to us even before the crowdfunding, not only after the crowdfunding stage. So you have a lot of experience with this. Yeah. <laughs> How old is this company? I love this company, it's pretty cool. How old is this company? It's just 15, 50 years old, not pretty long. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Shabax. Hi. Hi. So uh, this is the big TCL booth here, CS 2020. Welcome in Vegas. You yes. have some really exciting stuff here, huh? Yes, we have some uh, 8K announcement. We have some mini LED announcement and a lot of QLED. QLED is everywhere based on quantum dots. This is really cool. And a lot of people are checking out your cinema wall. Yeah, There's, that uh, one is micro, micro LED. So this 132 is different inch. from mini LED. Here, here every LED is a pixel. So you have 24 million pixels. You have 24 million LEDs, and this is active, meaning it's not a backlight. Uh, the, there is no filter. What you see here is micro LED. It's an innovation. It's a prototype. Uh, when the technology will be mature, maybe in one, two, three years from now, then we will bring it on the market. Is this the coolest looking micro LED large display in the whole world? This is one of the coolest. You see a lot of micro LED solutions. Uh, Samsung you know, is showing something. Oh, exactly the same technology. Same technology. Every brand, every major brand is working on this micro LED technology at the moment. So it's not quite 8K, but it could, it's definitely going to be 8K. It's going to be 8K, or by the time uh, by the time we launch it, it's going to be maybe 12K uh, resolution. What I can tell you is, is we already uh, sold a few pieces, but it, it, we need uh, some maintenance. Yeah? It's very, very, very big. It's very potentially big, very bright. You can do any size you want. Yes, and and also really good for the resolution. So you can talk here. We show 132 inch. But we also show in the past 150 inches, so much And uh, basically it's just tiles, you can put them together as many as you want. Yes. And you have small tiles of micro this, LEDs. This prototype is made of small tiles, yes. But the, the target in the end is to make this in a factory, so in one piece. So, but here for the prototype, you see small tiles of micro LEDs, it's easier to maintain and to control. Maintain, yeah. it means sometimes some pixel die and you want to swap out a tile? Because it's heating a lot and uh, on this prototype, which is heating a lot, you know, 24 hours a day, uh, sometimes, correct, there might be some tiles to replace. It looks really impressive. And uh, it's really the, cool product. the border around here is much closer than the Samsung demo. That uh, means you're not scared to let people see it. No, we, it are not cool. scared. we are not scared to say it's prototype, it's technology. But in the meantime, we have a very nice one, which is mini LED. And this is the big, big launch for this show. Correct. You, you're claiming to be the first. And the only one. The only one. To so do what? Mini to LED, do mini LED 8K yes. or mini LED, mini LED? Both 4K, 8K, and with a quantum dot filter with QLED on top. So what you see here behind me is a 75 inch mini LED first generation. So, so what do you mean first generation? Generation one, which we are actually selling this model. So this model is on the market, 75 inch in the US, 65 inch in Europe. What you have here at the back, 15,000, so 15K, 15,000 really small LEDs. And they, these LEDs are split into zones. We have 800 zones, meaning 
we can dim and control individually each zone. Great contrast, great brightness, and when the blue LEDs are gonna hit the quantum dot, it's gonna explode into colors. So, 800 you say? 800 zones. Uh, Gen 1. First generation 1. And generation 2, yeah. we improve the concept of course. It's gonna launch by the end of this year. Yeah. Uh, and then we encapsulate more than 20,000 LEDs in a small sheet of glass. So here you have a sheet of glass. And in this sheet of glass, we encapsulate so many small LEDs, like 20 or 25,000 LEDs. 25,000? Depending, depending on the screen size. You could even have So you're more. going from 800 to 25,000? No, that's the amount of LEDs. Then the LEDs are split into zones. And here we are talking about thousands of zones. Yes, so 1,000, 2,000 zones can control individually also. So same as generation one, much more precise, much more dense. The LEDs are smaller, more powerful, and the pitch, so meaning the gap between each LED, much smaller. So we can refine and control the backlight even better. This is 8K. This is 8K, more than 2000 nits brightness. And here we're not talking about peak brightness, but average brightness on the screens can be 2000. What you don't see actually is you have a very good transition between the black and the white. You have no halo effect or almost no halo effect. This one is a prototype, but we're gonna launch it by the end of the year. By end of the, the year, of, not before? By the end of 2K20. So, And then uh, we have a generation three. We can talk later. At the press uh, conference, you yes. were... That's called mini LED on glass. And at the press conference, we call it Vidrian. <laughs> Vidrian Milidi, mini LED on glass. Uh, at the press conference, you were kind of uh, teasing Hisense a little bit or somebody else doing uh, dual layer displays. You don't do dual layer, you we only don't do mini LED. Correct. You uh, claim it's better, it's brighter. It's brighter, it's uh, safer in, from an industrial point of view, and it's easier to control together with quantum dots. Uh, of course, uh, I cannot comment on Hisense solution. I, they may have a good solution, but we think Mini LED is a much better solution. Uh, but they, they, they claim to have uh, two million zones. Yes, because of this double... As a full uh, HD zones. I'm not they sure. even might do 4K zones eventually. Yeah, I'm not sure how exactly how it works. I need to check out on Hisense. But no Halo, even it's just, just thousands of zones. Just thousands of zones, meaning 2,000 of zones is enough to decrease the halo effect, but on the next generation, we will eliminate the halo effect. What do you mean next generation? Generation three of mini LED. You showing for, something? Yes, for 2021 or 2022. So meaning in two years from now. You know, maybe I have to explain, these products are full array local dimming, FALD, full array local dimming, meaning the LEDs are placed at the back. It's direct backlight. The challenge here is to make thin products. Generation one, two centimeters instead of four centimeters. Generation two will go slimmer. And here we have a generation three, which is less than five millimeters. So if you go on the side, here, this is really direct backlights. So the LEDs are placed at the back in a very thin sheet of glass. And the LEDs are closer to the screen to reduce the thickness, less than five millimeters. What we also put, we put the speakers in a nice soundbar to make the TV even slimmer. So slim is a big trend in the last many years, but I think the most important is brightness, quality. Sorry, I didn't Most important, I would think, is uh, brightness, quality. How is that? Is that also an improvement? In, in terms of picture quality, you have four key things for the human eyes and, 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 and the brain. You have the contrast, which is the difference between the bright and the dark area. Contrast is probably super important, the most important. Number two, you have the color. Uh, the human eyes can, can really see the colors. Number three, you have the sharpness, so the level of detail, the resolution. And number four, you have the motion on moving pictures, how, how it behaves without any judder. So these four factors are really very well managed with direct LED solution or mini LED solution. Contrast is really much improved. HDR effect is there. You have all the details on the bright and the dark zones. And, and the last thing to improve is really on the thickness. Huh? And you really, really here you see, you will have much more zones. We are talking about 
300 K zones. Maybe. 300,000 zones. Yes. And the challenge now on this it's kind of very thin TV, it's heating. It's heating a lot. It's becoming warm. You don't, you so don't dare back. touching it. It gets hot. Well, you can touch it. No, no, no yeah. problem. I got but static electricity. I can't touch. Okay, but at the yeah. back, we put a lot of vents to uh, to avoid to, to make the heat escaping at the back. The so vents you, and the stainless. yeah, you see a lot of you see. Or I'm not sure if you can see that at the camera. You see a lot of holes at the back here. This is really for the heat to come out. Nice. And the nice thing, even in a very slim TV, now we can put the electronics. So all the chassis, what we call the printed circuit board, is still at the back. Uh, so when you plug your HDMI and so on, very convenient. So um, how does it work, this uh, mini? It's kind of nearly micro LED because you have 300K of them. It's a lot. But mini LED on glass, it's how not, is the technology of that, doing that? It's not, it's not yet, it's not micro LED. Again, if you, if you look at an 8K TV, 8K TV, you have 33 million pixels. There's only 300,000. And, and here, you don't have one LED per pixel. Yeah, it's still a backlight. It's 100 times less. Yes. But it's getting closer. You could say that. But the result is not that far away. Uh, the, the result is not really not that far away from a micro LED. The most important is for the consumer and for the user, do they see a difference or they don't? In terms of contrast, brightness, color, perception, on QLED powered by mini LED, they see a big difference. They even see sometimes a real, uh, how to say, benefit versus OLED. So yes, the QLED powered by mini LED, you really see a big difference. You have so many zones and so many brightness and colors. So here, what we are also Let's check showing. the difference between OLED yeah, and your well, mini LED. Yes. So you're much brighter, basically, no? On the left, Is that what you would say? Yes, on the left, you see a much brighter and more, much more detailed picture. When you look at the bright zones, the white zones, or the black zones, you probably more see, see more details here. You see more details in the hairs, on the skin, because the HDR is better managed. Of course, OLED... You're not OLED, cheating with their demo? No, no cheat, no, no. Of course, OLED is really good. O it's OLED, great. OLED is great. You have more brightness. Is, uh, what's That's, the nits? Uh, here, we, are, we talk about... 1,200. Here, here, this is mini LED, first generation. Huh? Generation one on the market, 1,500 nits. Second generation, 2,000 nits. Third generation, no limit. No limit. No, we will go high. We and this control. one is capped at five to seven hundred nits. Yes, kind of. A traditional fifty-five uh, display or LED display is. A, they don't have a system to go brighter. No, it's not possible. The technology break the OLED. Not, yes, but the black level are really good. So now you see, you see, or you don't see, but HDR effect might be difficult with the camera to perceive. On the left, I don't film HDR. More details on the skin and more 3D HDR effect. You see here, all the details are kind of lost sometimes. All right. So out of box settings, uh, dynamic picture on both. You see that mini LED is really quite Last good. year, the colleague, uh, American guy, uh, we were talking about the AI. Yeah. And I wonder if it was an error. He was talking about um, uh, that you have some kind of AI that's like much more efficient than H.265 to compress video to like very tiny bitrate. Yes. Is that real? Yes. Uh, it's it's a okay. This one is a technology demo. So the, the one you are referring to is not this demonstration. It's another demonstration. Yeah. Um, it will land in 2K20 this year on the range on uh, on high-end TVs. That one is also really interesting. You have a library, a library of pictures in the TV and on the cloud. So to compare with, and what you can see here, the, the TV recognizes this is tree, this is leaf, there is brown. So, so it optimizes that, for that? Yeah, the color saturation is increasing on the brown and the red and increasing on the blue because it detects some water. But the color saturation is okay on the green. So it keeps it adjusting keeps the settings. It keeps adjusting the settings by picture recognition, by scene recognition. Will uh, autom in, let's say implement the right settings. So Same the, for audio quality. 
the codec thing is real and 2020 what does that mean does that mean you're going to enable uh, this, this is new real systems so for high quality 4k streaming and lower bit rate or what does it mean no, the no. other thing i'm talking about i mean the, um, the, oh, codec the other thing. thing the first thing codec yes the codec the codec compression yeah. is going to happen at the end of this year so what is it going to enable like uh, does that mean you're going to enable better quality oh, 4k the benefit, streaming the benefit for consumers is when you when you stream some let's say low-end youtube content with a lot of macro blocks for example you will have less of these visible macro blocks on the screen uh, so you will see less of macro block issues less less pixelization on uh, let's say normal standard or low-end content but this is, is it a the, new the codec developed by clean. tcl Sorry it's again? a new codec developed by GCL? No, it's an improvement. It's an improvement of an existing codec. It's better than AV1, it's better than H.266. You could say it's the same, it's comparable, but the, let's say the effect on screen is better. Yes. Nice. So maybe you contribute all this to like YouTube and Netflix so they can uh, better compress their, their content. Yes, maybe. because not everyone has 8K YouTube or 8K Netflix yeah. not yet on the market. What's happening here? Uh, here we have a 100 inch TV with a great sound. Uh, 4,000 nits. Yeah, that TV we sell in China. Uh, and the TCL brand, of course. Very, very bright. Very bright. <laughs> Dolby Vision Atmos. Uh, but the most impressive part is also the sound. <coughs> what you cannot hear here. But you see on the left and the right, behind you on the side, you have the, these tall boys. Um, and you have a subwoofer here in the middle giving a great, great sound. So at TCL, you, <coughs> you don't only want to do soundbar stuff, which a lot of people are doing. It's nice to have real surround sound and yeah. real speakers yes. to say. Not just yes. little things that you put under the TV. Well, you want to have real speakers we do for the both. experience. We no? do both. We often, uh, below the TV, we often uh, include a soundbar. We integrate a soundbar. Sometimes we integrate it in a flush way or in a more prominent way, like what you see here. And we also sell individual soundbars, of course. Is that your screen? What's this? No, that's No, no, that's, that's, okay. not, that's Something not from else. TCL. It's, okay. um, it's another friendly company over there. I think it's from there. the CS. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, CS, yeah, sure. sorry. And uh, the next big news, huh? we discussed 8K, we discussed yeah. mini-LED. The, the other big news is quantum dot TVs, QLED TVs. But all of those that you've shown until now, are they all quantum dot or not? Yes, but we are was showing 8K. I was showing mini LED, so uh, let's say very good, innovative, the best picture quality, let's say. Here, what we have is more affordable quantum dot TVs. So these quantum dot TVs are with, they come with 100 Hertz. So they are really good quantum dot. 100 or 120 for the US, you know? Yeah, 120 in the US, 100 Hertz in Europe. And uh, this is 75 inch. It's 75, 65 and 55. We have three screen sizes and it's kind of QLED plus, let's say, uh, because 100 Hertz, 100% 100 color volume, very bright screens. On the other side, we have even more affordable QLED TVs. No 100 Hertz, 50 Hertz, very slim. What you can see here is probably one of the most competitive QLED TV range on the market when we launch it in April and May. 82 inch, 65. 82, 82 for the US and in Europe we will have a 75, a 65, a 55 and a 50. Most probably, still under discussion, three size for Europe, 50, 55, 65. We are also targeting, you know, more affordable prices on these kind of QLED models. So, so it's a really talking. good it's really good QLED, really good QLED quality, very good with a lot of innovation inside, hands-free, we, we can talk more, Android and so on. But this kind of TV will target the price of a normal TV. So almost QLED for free. <coughs> uh, we will see how the market is moving, but we are preparing, I'll say, our mission is to democratize the technology to make quantum dot affordable so that everyone can afford the quantum dot. So a 65 year. inch quantum dot for 499. No, how what much? did you say again? 499, 65 inch quantum dot. Way cheaper. Cheaper? No, 1499 you said or 499? 499. No, no, 50, 55, 55, 4, 5, 499. Okay. Depending on the competition, again. Yeah, 65 is a little bit more. It depends when the market will be. And, and below 1,000. 65 might be or will be below 1,000, we think.
Yes, 799. We don't know yet, to be honest. We really don't know yet. We, look, we are in January. We're going to introduce this range in April, May. Uh, many things can change before the Euro Cup. Uh, you know that the market price are really aggressive. We will be there at the right level of price. Uh, this is our mission in TCL. We will never make super high quantum dot. Well, Brightness we, we, is good on those cheap ones. But again, uh, those cheap ones are really good quality. Is it 1,000 nits or no? It's, it's 800. 800. 800 nits, so very good brightness. 100% color volume because it's quantum dot. Yeah. Why can't we get the big ones in Europe? Why do you just sell them to the Americans? The market. Because uh, the market we also love big. Here, here it doesn't look big, but in your, in your flat, in my flat, uh, or it's too big. In your castle, in your big home, maybe good enough. But not There's so not many all people. Castles. All the castles are in Europe. No. There's not castles in the US. That's only a few customers. That's not enough. Uh, we, need, we need more and bigger homes in Europe. In USA, everyone can accept this. No, to be honest, even in USA, this 82 inch might be uh, still Overkill. big for, for next year. So but, the uh, year after, 2021. Uh, can you estimate around how much would the 82 inch the market, Quantum Dot be for the US? How much is the price? Is it 1499? I cannot comment at all. I, I, I have no clue here in the US. It's the Americans who deal yeah, with that. Yeah, because it's the Americans. We have to ask our So you American don't have colleagues. space in the, in the containers, shipping containers. When you go to Europe, there's no space for the big one. No, that's right not now. a big deal. But I advise, we talk to Bruce later for yeah. the USA range. You can easily talk to Bruce. <laughs> all right, we can, we can catch up with him later. Uh, how about, uh, how about here, these? <laughs> so for Europe, how about these? How about these? This one? So this one, they come with, around. for Europe, they come with Android 9, compatible Android 10, 11. Uh, they also come, very interesting here, what you can see, is they come with a soundbar. In the soundbar, we include a microphone. We call it nice. hands-free voice control. So now you can say, hey Google, to wake up your TV and change channel, open Netflix. You don't need your remote control or your smartphone anymore. You and you can speak Alexa with it also. If you prefer to speak Alexa, you can do it also. Both Alexa compatible and uh, Google uh, Assistant compatible. You can even speak both at the same time. No, hey Google, what choose. time is it? Hey Alexa, record the TV oh, show. You, you can do that because they have different skills. Uh, Alexa skills and uh, Google Assistant skills are quite different. Uh, and of course, you can use both. The only difference is when you use a Google Assistant, then you talk directly to the TV. You say, hey Google, or you can use your remote control. If you use the Alexa, the work with Alexa, you still have to plug an Echo Dot to it. So you plug it, and then you can say, hey, uh, no, no, hey Google, you say, Alexa, change channel. Alexa, open Netflix. So uh, I'm not to say anything bad about Roku. Roku is great and stuff. But oh, uh, sometimes you do US? Roku in the US. So just but in, in Europe, we get Android. Yes, in Europe, which is great. Android is really big, really useful. This is probably the best OS so far that we can have here in Europe. Uh, how to say? Android system, Android TV, is very much evolutive. You have updates and you have upgrades. But uh, this is the biggest amount of applications you can dream. You have the Amazon Prime, you have the Netflix, you have all the latest applications on Android and, TV. Uh, Google has done a, uh, Google sorry, has done a good job in the last year, a couple of years, to improve the Android TV experience. I think you are raising a valid point. At the, at the really beginning, if, I, if, I, if we go four or five years back, it was the first time we launched Android TV. Let's say all the brands launched Android TV 5, was not ready. Android 6 was well, quite slow, but from Android 7 and 8, you see a lot of improvements. The operating system has improved so much between Android 5, 6, and then 7, 8, it's really optimized for TV. At the beginning, what, what, what the makers, TV makers were doing, they were just porting Android mobile phone into a TV, which didn't work that well. But that was Android 5 and 6. Later, we developed specific Android TV versions, 7, 8, and 9. And this is really working fast and really good at the moment. And, and you see the sales of Android TV raising up. In consumers Europe. are happy. Yeah, really happy. We have really good feedback on that. Uh, nice. Because you find all your applications, you have many useful uh, features like, you know, the Google Home, you can control your curtains, uh, your coffee machine, your fridge via Google Home. 
um, you can enjoy games, uh, you have 4K uh, HDR on Netflix, uh, Dolby Vision on Netflix, HDR 10 Plus on Amazon Prime, so many applications and games compared to other systems. Because uh, we go here, Tell me, uh, TCL is doing lots of uh, smart home things, no? Correct. There's, uh, you can connect the lights, you can connect uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, humidifier, the air, air purifier. Yeah, so what we are showing here is a connected, is a connected home uh, with, with some fun stuff, uh, detection. We can train nice. uh, Jim if you like. <laughs> it's very cool. It's very cool. It's so, just an app on Android TV. It's just an app, this, right? Uh, it's an app, and sometimes it's a chipset which we include in uh, in all these devices, in all these TCL devices. You have a small chipset so that they can intercommunicate as an ecosystem. And uh, here, there's even the whole uh, TCL kitchen with a smart, um, uh, what do you call it, the hub? The thing there, uh, smart, a fridge. smart fridge over there, smart fridge, uh, smart cooking, smart yes. doors, yeah, smart, smart curtains, uh, smart lamps. TCL is a market leader in China for these smart doors. The smart Selling lock. any in Europe? Maybe it's called the smart lock. Um, only in China at the moment. We are they considering come to Europe. No, we are discussing with customers to introduce this in Europe. Nice, but we don't have any agreement yet. Uh, this could be a smart mirror in front of the bathroom and this. The air, condition. air conditioning system. Um, and over there, you have also a part of the smart room where you can control, you know, the lamps or the uh, popcorn uh, coffee machine via the Google Home system. Nice. So I did another video in Shenzhen. Uh, people can uh, check you already it out. Made this, and uh, with all the AI. And yes. uh, if you don't mind, we can go walk sure. around, around we over here. Over there. You have a strange. This is a uh, very really cute fun. dog. What is this about? Uh, this is about you TV. know when you. When you look at younger generations today, when they, f when they snap or when they do some Facebook Messenger and so on, they very often use uh, the portrait or the landscape mode, yeah? both. Uh, this TV will react to your content on your mobile phone automatically. So nice. if, you shake, if you shake your mobile phone, for example... How do you make it turn? I will ask the lady if she's here. Do you have the mobile for the demo? You right. can have a short demo here, I think. Let's Ah, let's go screen. together. Let's go there, yes. Yeah. So then uh, the, the phone is paired with your The phone TV. is paired with the TV. And then some kind of shake happens. So here you shake on the phone and then it, the There's TV the motor turns. turning the TV. And you see a very nice uh, the sound bar there. in the back. You have yeah. a very good sound also. Nice. And then you have the Android AI right there. And you can shake it back to puppy upright mode yes and there is also a possibility that when you when you change from portrait to landscape the TV will also change the format automatically nice. uh, then we keep keep going around yeah that's the whole uh, big push by TCL to launch smartphones so launch uh, earphones are, are always coming with smart speakers this is really fun uh, TCL earphones t t fun TCL earphones full of colors uh, we call them intra and we spent a lot of time on this part here because this part should be really gentle to the inside of your ear. The weight, so the weight, this part should be on the outside of your ear because the human ear, my human ear, your human ear is not prepared to support any weight on the inside. Nice. So we spend a lot of time to optimize the shape here so that when you put it in your ear, really, the weight is supported by the outside and not by the inside. So with TCL, people are not going to get strange ears out of using these kind of things. No, it's very which going to happen with Apple and that all the one other ones. Is, uh, can, I, I can't say I'm Apple, joking a little bit. But that one yeah. is really comfortable. Well engineered. Um, these kind of uh, headphones are really uh, great. You have two range of, uh, of product. This one will be like uh, introduced in March, April in Europe, around 79 uh, euros. So very good. And you gave one to every media at your press conference. No, we're I've not buying medias, my friend. We are. You gave are, one, but for testing, yes. For testing, for yeah. Testing. So I have, I have one. I'm going to review it very soon. So we're gonna 79 test out the quality. euros. I think you got them at the press conference, and we got also the sports mode over there. The sports one, sorry. This one is going to be like more 99 euro in Europe. Um, it comes uh, with the charger, of course. 
you have very good autonomy. Yeah? It's splash proof, sweat proof. Um, and the quality hopefully is great. The sound quality you're gonna you're gonna tell us very yeah. soon. I guess. I'm starting to testing already. But you will hear it. Nice. The battery life is good, long and everything. And then, uh, talking about sound, sound quality, Yeah, we have the best sound bar of the show. Already? Yes. Here. This is uh, considered already at IFA. We got five awards, best sound bar of IFA. Again, here in Vegas, this is the best sound bar of the show. Maybe you can decrease a little bit. Can you decrease a little bit? No. Just with the ground. What is really nice in this sound bar here is that we have deflectors. So, most of the soundbars are doing virtualization, you know? It's an algorithm to do Atmos left-right virtualization. Here, this soundbar is not virtual. This is a mechanical uh, principle with deflectors, the sound flow. You can feel the sound flow going on the left, going on the right to the wall and reflecting. To do better surround kind of effects without yes, surround. because when you hear, the, when you send the flow, when I talk to you like this, you understand me. If I talk to you like this, or if I talk to you like this, then you don't understand me anymore. So it's a basic principle, but that's the only soundbar in the world doing this. Deflectors, the, the flow is sending there. Of course, in the middle, you still have middle speakers for the clarity, for the voice, and for the dialogue. This is this going to be affordable? This is called Radens. This is TCL Radens, affordable, less than 400 euro, probably 399, launching in Q1, so March, April. Nice. Let's really check nice. some of the phones, even though it's not your segment. Right. But let's go over there uh, because uh, TCL what? is big, going big time on the phones. Yeah, we have announced. Um, so, six months ago in Europe, uh, at IFA, was well, sorry, less than six months ago, in September, we announced the Plex. Uh, launched the Plex in Germany, Spain, and now we are launching uh, in USA, here in USA. This is TCL Plex, so really good uh, picture quality and camera. Uh, is it called Plex or is it a different name now? Uh, a different that's name. a good question. We are yeah. thinking maybe to use a different name, yes. Yeah. Um, so you have one with a little dot in the corner. Yeah. It's, and it's uh, high a, quality build, it's nice. called a notch. It's TCL quality display, right? Yes, it's TCL display and we use what we call a chipset called Next Vision. This is all the experience we have in TV in terms of HDR. We bring it to the mobile. So that mobile has a, has a HDR quality in ter on the display. But the price is uh, half of an iPhone or maybe less. It's like a even, good price, I no? Think, I, think, I think it's even, yeah, depends which iPhone you yeah. take, but of course it's TCL and it's affordable technology. And um, oh, any chance to try the, more, the you see more in Barcelona? You're uh, talking about a foldable phone. Any chance you might have one you're showing to people? Uh, you, if, Real you, one? if you come in Barcelona at the Mobile yeah. World Congress, you will, awesome. you, we will reveal and we will announce much more details on this foldable phone. So it's going to be a cool foldable phone. Hopefully it's not going to cost $2,500 like Huawei or oh. Samsung. Oh, Samsung. Maybe more affordable. You hopefully. Know us. You know us. But you the quality is doing. hopefully good. Uh, the quality is going to be under control. It comes also from our uh, display factories. So the power of TCL is that we are not only doing the hardware and, and, and the software, but the, the main power of TCL is that we are using our own displays. So we control what we buy, we control what we do, because we control the display. We are vertically integrated from display until the product. Not That's many companies are like this in the world. Only three in the world. Only three electronic companies in the world are vertically integrated. Two are Korean. Samsung and LG. Yeah, and one Chinese, TCL. And all the other brands in the whole world have to buy. They buy from a different supplier. Yes, from five, six different. It could be BOE, for could example, BOE. who doesn't make their own brand. Could be TCL, uh, CSOT factories. So you ship to other companies too? Yes, we, we ship displays to any company, any competitor. Uh, you know, in this industry, we share, we share displays sometimes. Uh, but in TCL, we mostly use our own displays because we really want to control the quality, the technology, innovation, and, and ultimately have an affordable uh, price of it. Thanks a lot for making these, these amazing displays because uh, it's great uh, to... There's 7 billion people in the world and everybody enjoys displays 
and it's nice that somebody is thinking about doing them affordable right uh, not just good um, quality I'm not gonna complain too much about some of the Korean displays but sometimes they're very expensive I mean they also have different screws for all these different markets yes, yes. but uh, affordable is great so everybody can afford a nice AK QLED not suit. only affordable really good quality or good quality yes at an affordable price that's so what, that's you're gonna good. be number one eventually you're sometimes you are number one we have some countries where we are really number one or two example USA um, also in France we are number three in TV on the market because we have a TCL and Thomson brand for example so we are the number three TV uh, seller so you are we have some countries where when we invest really uh, you see the sales really growing fast so China is one of these uh, USA is a key country in Europe you have France Germany UK where TCL is growing constantly yes and quite fast faster than the market at least Hi, my name is Matt Barber. Welcome to the Hisense 2020 CES booth. One of the first products we're going to look at today is our prototype 8K television. The model that we see here is an 85 inch 8K television. So there's over 33 million pixels to deliver the highest resolution possible in LCD panels today. Uh, right now, as I said, it is a prototype, so we're still working on it, but it is going to be quantum dot. It does have 8K AI uh, upscaling and a pretty unique 4.2.2 multi-channel speaker system uh, where there are actually four speakers spread around the frame of the television and built into the underneath display cabinet. In this particular unit, it will come with this secondary uh, stand with an LED display on it that is actually able to be integrated into things such as uh, your smart home. So you can actually control your smart home from that LED display, as well as showcase things like uh, music lyrics or obviously information about your favorite artists, uh, bring up movies that you might want to actually display on the television. So a very versatile kind of secondary LED display uh, to complement the 8K screen. Another prototype that we have at CES 2020 for Hisense is our 8K ULED XD television. Hey. Now, so this is a dual layer. This is dual layer. So when you hear dual layer, or excuse me, dual cell technology and XD, they're talking about the exact same thing. And what we've done with this technology is taken a 4K panel and a 2K panel and physically bonded them together. Now there is still an LED backlight panel and with that LED backlight panel and the 2K panel, we are creating a level of contrast never seen before in LCD technology. The 2K panel acts as luminance control for the LED backlight that gives us OLED level blacks while maintaining LED brightness levels, basically bringing the best of both worlds of OLED and LCD together into one product. Is it Again, true there's a little bit loss of brightness? I'm because sorry? Because of the second layer, there's maybe some loss of brightness a little bit. So that has been a, a, a common question, um, in my humble opinion, given that some of our units have over a thousand nits peak brightness. If there is any loss of light, you can't tell. So this is going to be over a thousand nits. Now the 75 inch that we're seeing here in the 8K, uh, again being a prototype, it hasn't been set yet. We're saying on our placard over here that it is a thousand nits, uh, but when it comes to market, could be more. Could be more. The, the one that was before was not dual layer, it might be brighter. Correct. No? Correct. It might be a uh, 2,000 meters. Um, they did not give us a nit count for it, so I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. But uh, it was definitely coming to market, uh, or is it already on market? Well, the and that's the 4K interesting. XD. That's a very interesting question, and here's why. In uh, late summer of 2019, Hisense uh, actually released a dual cell television in domestic market China, therefore becoming the first company in the world to deliver dual cell technology to the consumer um, in our ULED XD brand. So that being said, a lot of consumers are asking, well, when is this coming to the US? Well, it's the 65 XD 9G is tentatively slated for Q3, Q4 of this year. And this has the exact same technology as we saw with the 75 inch over there. Uh, but again, this is the 4K, 2K concept as opposed to the 8K concept. Q3, Q4. Yes, sir. So you're ramping up mass production because it's not easy to mass produce something like dual cell. Maybe that's why it's not ready yet for, for global. 
Well, I mean, we are talking about LCD panels, so the the creation of the panels themselves is fairly common nowadays, since the commoditization of the technology. The bonding of it doesn't take That's that me. long, but it's it's the alignment. It's the alignment that is, is key and is crucial there. But we are at a point now where uh, we feel like we're able to not only do it fairly quickly, but also be able to get the image that you see here and done the correctly. What, what are the nits? This one's going to be a thousand nits peak brightness. So Quantum dot, thousand nits, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. Two million zones. So the two, two million, million zones. Two million, two million on the second cell. Absolutely. So, and, and again, I don't want to confuse anyone. Hello guys, this is Andrew from Onyx International. We are here at CES convention in Las Vegas 2020. One more year again. And this time we're introducing very quick, I'm going to show you the no the new uh, ink phone 5.8 inches that we are introducing at ces or still is a demo but already functioning it has a sim card inside we can call to different phones and uh, already has the same android 9.0 that all our other products has and very quick as you can see you can have several applications the, the the screen refresh is very fast. You have four modes of refresh if you want to scroll on uh, or browse the internet or just reading. And uh, it's gonna be great. I mean, this product is gonna be uh, ready for the market uh, around end of Q1 or beginning of Q2 2020. So get to uh, stay tuned and uh, check it out. Thank you. So how's it going at the CES? Ah, CS is being fantastic. Uh, for me, it's the third year in a row, and uh, it's going really good because uh, at this point we have new partners uh, worldwide, or a new pos possible partners for the future. So uh, we are here, uh, hoping to close some deals and to start cooperating uh, with some companies to develop the U.S. market. So there's big potential in the U.S. 300 it's huge. million people. It's huge. We have, we have the the the. We have the information that we got from our Amazon sales, and uh, and every everything indicates that uh, the U.S. the U.S. market is very big, and that most importantly that the, the American people love our products, and they they see the potential, and they they see how these products can can be useful for them in their daily tasks. All right, and what's the other news around here? So basically, um, as as you. As you have uh, reviewed in your videos uh, previously, this one is the Note 2. Uh, the Note 2, if I'm not wrong, you already reviewed it in uh, Hong Kong, uh, which is already the, uh, the, the latest 10.3 version, which includes fingerprint recognition, uh, a, a strong and robust hardware, which includes 4 gigabytes RAM and the, and the uh, octa-core processor. At the same time, we have improved a little bit the, the software now. You can take notes onto, on, on top of up to eight files, different files like PDF, EPUB, Mobi, Doc, HTML, etc. So we are keeping improving our products. Uh, and, uh, also, as, as you may remember, we also have a handwriting uh, recognition to digital text and also voice to, voice to, to speech. Uh, uh, software so basically people will use this device for for working and studying so the uh, momentum is going up more and more people getting into this market uh, are yeah. buying yes yes because this is of course is a process uh, everyone in the very beginning uh, compared this product with a regular six inch e-reader <coughs> which of course has a technology as, as reference and also the, fu the, the, the function of reading. But these product, these big sizes go beyond that and uh, also allow other features that, as I said, are good for, for working and studying. Once our brand is every time more uh, known, then uh, of course we have more users, uh, more followers and, uh, at the, oh, and at the same time more uh, partners, business partners are willing to work with us. Right, and, uh, and here at the CES, you also have a colleague, uh, American colleague. Yeah, Jason. Uh, Jason, is, is our, Jason is our associate in the US and is helping us to develop uh, different niche markets. He's a, a professional of the, of the American football and other sports, and he's bringing our solution to different niche markets. So um, here at the CES, what's been the, 
the response from people and what do you usually show them? For well, example, when you talk about yeah, uh, American the, football, is there a solution about this? Yeah, I think the, uh, this, this, the use of the e-ink screen allows for the use out in the sunlight. And so if I get a pen here. Yeah. Yeah. So by uh, using the e-ink screen, um, the thing that would be very uh, useful to the outside world is, um, you know, I could be diagramming uh, some plays. You know, I could say, hey, here's some, here's some players here. And I'm going to, um, you know, you're going to block... Uh, this guy, um, you're gonna block him, block him, and then we're gonna run. Uh, you're gonna go fill here, and I can show this. The key is that out in the sunlight, I can be way far away from the athletes, from the players. It's impossible to do with an iPad. It's impossible to do with an iPad because of the glare, because of the glass screen. But with the e-ink um, screen, uh, you're able to do this outside. You know, it's one of the major benefits of this. And, uh, and so that's what I'm trying to use uh, out in the, in the uh, real world, you know, out in the applications, you know, those, uh, those markets that obviously there's a lot of sports that are done outside uh, where you can draw and, uh, and reuse. Imagine a coach could also uh, diagram these up, go to the next play. These things are saved, you know, with all the storage on this. I can review this with my players at a later time using some film, using my diagrams uh, to help my athletes get better, help my coaches uh, be better uh, strategists. <laughs> All right, so at CES, there's lots of interactions, right? Yes, everybody wants to come up. They want to touch it. They want to ride on it. Uh, they want to they, you know, see what it's like riding. Uh, mostly heard just all positives about the riding experience. It feels like paper. Um, you know, writing whether you know, you're writing uh, research documents, um, you're taking notes in, the, in your meetings, um, just all these types of... Uh, these things that are going on with, with business professionals. You know, this is made for business professionals. And then the ease of uh, jumping from a note-taking device to the, the library where the PDFs can then uh, be used. And so now on a PDF, you know, I can just have simple, oh, have simple text here. But you can thumb through uh, any kind of PDF, it changes, um, then I can write right on it. You know, so if I'm doing some study, doing some things like this, uh, I can change the way I view this, a split screen. You know, most uh, professionals are not used to the split view where they can have a PDF on one side of the uh, e-ink screen and then taking, like I said, taking some notes on the other side. So, so how big is the potential in the U.S. market? Oh, I think, I mean, there's business professionals all over the world. There's athletes all over the world. There's coaches. Um, you know, the sky's the limit, I think. And <laughs> one of the things is just educating our, our um, consumers about the benefits of this. You know, I don't know about you, but I like reading um, on e ink screens compared to a, a backlight, uh, surf, you know, monitor screen. And I think in that uh, aspect in the education world, there's a lot of applications for that. All right. Yeah. Cool. So what's next also with Onyx? Well, I don't know if you saw already the, the e ink phone. phone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so, yeah, well, if you can't. The, the Android operating system is increasing. Ah, because now it's charging. Now it's, char now it's charging, but I think you saw it. You yeah, saw it saw uh, before. Uh, our CEO Kim showed to the show it to the camera. So basically, we are we understand there is a huge market. I mean, everyone there is million of people using smartphones every day, six to eight hours in front of the screen. It is demonstrated that the LCD screens and TFT screens damage uh, the the eyes. So for that reason, we we mix. In technology with a with a smartphone solution, and we we have a, a device which you can use with the basic functions as a as a smartphone to call everyone, and at the same time you can read all your ebooks or news or messages in an eye friendly screen. So it's a, it's going to be it's still not released. We don't have a, yet a retail price, neither nor a a, a, a release date. However, it's going to be, I guess, around end of Q1, maybe early uh, Q2, 2020. And, uh, well, we hope it's going to be a, a success. And this market is growing. So this you market... more and more uh, sales uh, compared to previous year. In general, you mean for... for this, for, your product. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. As I said previously, um, so in the very beginning, the brand uh, needs some time to, to, for people to know and also to know the products. For us also, it's, it's some time to be improving our products in terms of software and also providing a robust hardware. And at this point, we already have a quite mature product, but of course, software 
has always room for improvement and uh, of course we are every day working uh, to improve that. And here at CES 2020. Hi. Hi. So here you have an e-ink phone. Mm -hmm. Books, phone. How big is the screen? 5.8. 5.8 inch uh, e-ink. You can show the Android. Uh huh. Just then right. and enjoy. Are we on? So it looks nice. Um, is this coming to the market? Yes, it's coming to the market. It's not our first uh, ink uh, mobile phone. Actually, it's the second. We did one like six years ago, right? Seven yeah, you follow it. Yeah, it was a, a big story everywhere. It was the first one. Yeah, that's the second. And now, do you mean that maybe now um, the hardware, the CPU, um, the screen, Everything is, is ready for big market, you think? Of course. Um, we do it. Uh, not only uh, maybe we sell to, to some um, niche vertical market, but also we only show to the market uh, we can use it in our e reader, in our ink tablet. So it's great for reading uh, books, any books you want. And this is how it looks with the fingerprint sensor. Yeah. Camera. Camera. Everything type, standard. Type C. Uh, type C. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is a 5.7, and great for reading on the subway. And you can uh, turn off the front light. You have front light. Yes, we we have. Right. This. Uh, uh, there's a way to do with the front light. Okay, no problem. And then, uh, right here, this is a 5.7 and uh, next to the 13.3. Mm -hmm. How's it going with Max 3? Uh, Max 3 is good. It's good, good selling. People love it. Which is a big market for this? Is it education? Is it uh, uh, professionals? Education and uh, business and professional right lawyers and uh, entrepreneurs and uh, also some uh, engineering people designers they like it where is the best uh, market for you where are you selling more we sell all around the world every country you sell a lot in China right uh, comparably in China those smaller have a better selling and uh, in Europe and USA, a lot of people like the one. Yeah, they like, they love a bigger one. And here I see you have a keyboard. You can use any Bluetooth keyboard with a, with your all the devices have Bluetooth, right? Yeah, the Onyx product uh, uh, have rich imaginations. It's really cool. Um, and the price is still eight hundred. 800 something to to some bi business partner we have some special policy to them if they Here. make a big order you mean uh, not really just strategically we support those b2b partner to help them to have vertical mar market to have more applications in our device and when we look at this phone, for example, I saw that there's another company, uh, Hisense, is doing uh, something with the color. What do you think about the, that? The, uh, yeah, we, uh, there's many people is do doing it. Many people is doing the e-ink phone. And uh, I, I think uh, it, it's, a, it's a good starting for them. But for Onyx, we are experienced. Uh, we know that uh, people for using ink, first of all, they need to have a good reader. So that's uh, Onyx good end. And uh, the, the high sense is a color. Color, but uh, is, is color is a color is a prototype. We have our color one um, four years ago in education for bigger size. It's all it's an old uh, tech technology. 
in using the color videos. Filter, right? It's a color filter. It's not real color, but uh, if the technology gradually matures, we will think about it. How do you do the color? What's your technology about the color? Uh, uh, the technology, I think it's more suitable for children. And we do it uh, in our educational tablet, ink tablet, four years before. And uh, th there's also one uh, you're talking about on uh, on this one. No, it's ever. called the uh, uh. the poke, right? Um, where's the poke? Sorry, I can't find the poke. Uh, yeah, so. You were saying something about a poke device, also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me show you some interesting things. My favorite, but uh, it's it ready for sh shipping. Yeah, ready for shipping. It's very tiny, very slight, and uh, the battery uh, power consumption is very good. So it's a. How big? Six inch. Six inch. Six inch. Hey, I'm Brandon from Roland. Uh, we're here at CES 2020, and um, we have a large new presence here and a lot of cool things. So let's go have a look. What's have happening a look here? At what we have. So this is a demonstration of our Roland Cloud. So we have, uh, as you'll see, we have many, many virtual instruments. Uh, so. These are a lot of our classic instruments that were influential in a lot of uh, modern music that we know today. So the TB-303, which was instrumental in uh, genres like Acid House, the 808, which we all know the, the, the boom of a lot of modern music that comes from that, 909, another influential drum machine, Juno 106. So these are basically virtual instruments that you can get in a uh, basically a 1995 a month subscription. You get all the new instruments that are coming. and. Uh, you know, these are authentic circuit modeled uh, reproductions of How our classic instruments. How can you use instruments. those? Are you actually using those in conjunction with your... Yeah, with so one? they can be uh, in, a, in any digital audio workstation. Uh, and you can run them on a computer, laptop, desktop. And then we have all kinds of controller keyboards and things that you can play from. Uh, you know, things like knobs that are on this uh, 88 Mark II, which is a brand new MIDI controller we've just announced. Uh, these knobs will control these uh, these instruments on screen. So you, know, you can essentially do a whole live performance with a rack, you know, wall of, of instruments, but these are all in the computer and all and virtual. And you can use them in real time. Absolutely. Like real time access. Yep, uh, yep, real time. It's like having the original machine. So you can hear. So that's a 909, 303 going. You know, so that's five or six or so virtual instruments that are all running, and they're um, you know really really detailed models of all of our classic Roland instruments throughout you know 80s and 90s nice. and 70s. This is just one of the booths you have around here. Yeah, so we actually do a performance here uh, where we have uh, multiple um, players. So that that person is playing virtual instruments. Uh, this station here, and we'll look on the other side in a second, is the. Uh, the some more live performance instruments we just came out with. This is the MC707 Groovebox. So this is like a standalone production and performance device. You have eight tracks of drum machines and synthesizers, and you can perform on the pads and using the faders and the knobs. So you can write a whole piece of music on this. Um, and then this is the Jupiter XM. So this is a. Uh, the compact version of our new Jupiter X line. This kind of has all of Roland's history, really, in, in one box. There's like 40 years of synthesis uh, in this thing. So vintage analog style stuff, um, vintage digital stuff, and then new sounds. You can combine things together. Basically, five synthesizers stacked on top of each other. Cool thing that's in here is this thing called this iArpeggio, which uses uh, kind of machine learning to predict uh, to look at how you're playing and to predict how you're playing and we'll actually adjust the uh, complexity of arpeggios and things based on how based on how you play. So that's pretty cool and it's all made of metal and has that vintage uh, Jupiter look. So nice. And you have a bigger Jupiter behind We you? do, a Jupiter X, which if you want to walk right around here it looks really cool. Yeah, this is so new. This is, this is brand new. And so this actually isn't out until probably March or April. 
Uh, so this is a full-size version of the Jupiter X. Uh, nice, you know, the big kind of vintage. 66. 61 key. 61. Brand new keyboard. Um, so it's a brand new action that we that we make that's available in 61 and 76 uh, key. Uh, and yeah, so it's got you know lit up mod wheels, little display over here, but a lot of the stuff can be done from hands-on. The action on. is not like a nice real piano, no. It's no, like it's a synth action, but it's synth. a semi-weight synth synth action. So a heavier than your typical fully unweighted. Um, and it's a really excellent, uh, probably for me, one of the best synth actions. What's happening I've, with I've all these proud. LEDs? So these are these are kind of telling you the status of things. So this is this could be used to change sounds, but it could also be used to pick a model. So uh, if I want to make it a Jupiter or a Juno, which is another classic synthesizer, JX, SH, you know, these are all sought after synthesizers. You can switch the model depending on um, when you're in this model bank mode. It can also load scenes, which is a whole configuration with effects and everything, and you can be all ready for nice. a live performance or something. So. I'm hearing some uh, some uh, some drums. Yeah, so something is happening. This is soon. our this is our our dear friend Michael Shack, who uh, Hi. is uh, hello, hey, legendary in, uh, in on YouTube in, in drum demonstrations. Everywhere. Yeah, but he does a lot more than drum. He's uh, triggering video and controlling tempo and um, all kinds of instruments, and it's it's a really intricate intricate thing. So is it all set up or not? Are you uh, are you going to do a show? Uh, one minute. One minute. Okay. Well, maybe we'll roll back in a minute, or or can can you give us a little a little flurry, a little? Nice. There you go. How how good right. are the Roland uh, uh, electric drums? They're the best. The best. Why do you ask how good they are? <laughs> They're the best. There's no competition. Well, no there competition. is. Yeah. But they're not here. Yeah, yeah. The competition yeah. doesn't uh, touch this. Can't touch yeah. this. Well, we have this mesh head technology, yeah. and the way our symbols work, and and everything is really gives you the feel of of. I have a TD4. You know. Ah, congratulations! And it still works, correct? Yeah, of course. That's that's it. You have a drum set. You hit on it all the time, and it keeps on working. Okay, there's only 30 seconds left. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll get, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah. Well, we'll seconds. go. We'll Let's go get quickly. 20 Come seconds back. of this before it starts. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is a looping device. So we actually have a guy doing uh, beatboxing, and uh, so we got five channels of looping, and he can sing in and create drum parts and bass parts. And I would demonstrate, but I am I am no beatboxer. Beatboxer. But that's really amazing. And those guys actually play together. So up here, nice. all of these are synced together. So they play a performance together and do a bunch you of different. Get Probably uh, millions and millions of views on people filming these demos at CES. Yep, yep. It's going to be huge. Yep, it's been. In the next few months, people are going to be checking incredible. them out. And, and you know, mixing uh, beatboxing with drumming with synthesis and you know, groove boxes is, is pretty cool. So come this way. Um, yeah. This so is uh, the same machine like before. This is the. Uh, so we have the the bigger one. The. Uh, RC505, and then over here there is a smaller one, the RC202, which is like a two channel. Basically, tabletop looping, real simple to use, volume here, you can record and play, and you can just overdub as many times as you want. So, that plus nice. some talent. It's boss. That's right, that's boss, which is also part of Roland. And then uh, this is an interesting thing. So, this is called the Go Live Cast. So if you're a person who, in this case, this scenario is a person doing a makeup YouTuber, but it could be you could be a performer, uh, instrumentalist. You can plug your mic or your uh, your mixer into here, and then basically you just plug this into a tablet or a phone uh, over Wi-Fi. You can use another camera, so you can have a two-camera system just with this little box, no computer necessary, and then you can do uh, things like applause. You can put titles, overlays. You can play uh, video content. So it's a video mixer. It essentially, exactly. So any content that the phone has access to, you can you can overlay. And so one person can do a multi-camera angle, high production value uh, broadcast to uh, you know uh, Facebook. But you can also YouTube. flip it like normal video. Exactly. Yeah. This is like weird. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. This would be all portrait mode. But yeah, upright. you can switch everything to landscape, or you can do a combination of landscape and portrait if you want to. So how many channels? You say two. So two two video channels, and you can you can of course determine where they go or turn them off. Two video channels, and then any amount of audio or video content to, uh, based upon just what you have on the on the phone so it makes a super easy computerless you know setup for, for broadcasting high quality 
Um, and you know, the XLR jack here allows you to really plug in a nice, you know, really nice microphone or uh, or a feed from, let's say, a mixer or something. Catchy is a USB microphone. Yeah. You can? Uh, I don't think, no, you can't use a USB microphone, but I think you can use one of the microphones on uh, one of the tablets, I believe. One microphone. So you have a. But, but here we've just got an XLR connection. I'm not really sure how it works, but there's a yep. two inputs here. As for headphones. Of a so one USB of these connects part. to, um, one of these will connect to power. So you need some five volt power. One of them connects to the first device and then the second one is remote. So this could be a handheld, you know, could be yeah. walking around with it, but as long as it has Wi-Fi connection, it's good. Okay, so that's uh, 250 bucks. His, yeah, uh, let's go, let's go. controlling tempo and, and everything. So we'll come back here in a second, but just quickly, uh, this is called Zen Beats, and uh, this is a cross-platform, so Mac, PC, Android, um, and iOS uh, uh, music production system. So you can you know write drum patterns and keyboard patterns and things anywhere you are on a phone or a tablet, or you can also hook it up to something like the System 8 here, which is a, a Roland synthesizer that can also mimic a lot of our classic so synths. This is and a new a launch for the CES. Yes, that's right. So um, this was a uh, uh, used to be something called uh, Stage Light, which is now Roland Zen Beats, and then we released 1.1 here at the show, which um, gives us direct integration with the 88 Mark II controller we looked at at the beginning. So we can come back uh, here quickly, but I wanted to, you want to talk about the piano real yeah. quick? So this is uh, really interesting. This is a concept piano called the Facet Piano. And uh, this was essentially a design competition. Uh, Roland wanted to kind of challenge uh, the, the design world to say, well, what could the piano be? And uh, let's break out of the traditional mold of pianos. And so this was uh, this was a design uh, winner from South Korea, and uh, it was built by our team in Hamamatsu, and uses all the latest technologies. So Is that it has a speaker. A, yeah, so it has multiple speakers down here. Uh, in here, up there, there's even speakers Projector. That, and projection built in. So the sound will project. Uh, from this, so it's designed to project like an acoustic piano, uh, but also it can have actual visual projection as well. And uh, it has a tablet built in here to the uh, where the music stand would be, so the user can call up songs. Uh, it also has uh, voice control through uh, Alexa, and uh, yeah, uses all of our state-of-the-art technologies. I'm afraid to touch, but it's no, you can. This is the one in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. You only have one, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a, only one, but it is fully playable. In fact, uh, so uh, there's no price on it. Uh, no price, no, and uh, n no plan to actually have this piano, particularly as it stands available. However, you know, this will kind of inform, similar to how concept cars work, some of this stuff may trickle into um, production just, products. Just sell it. Yeah, yeah just put sell. it out there. People want it. We've actually had yeah. a lot of people ask about it, so yeah. And yeah. hopefully it'll be cheaper than a, uh, um, what do you call those? Than uh, a Lamborghini? Or, yeah, uh, no, the, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, unknown at this time, but we hope that some of this stuff will become... Steinway. Uh, Cheaper we'll, we'll than find, the Steinway. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe. They're becoming, but you know, more practical. Well, is it practical? I don't know, but it certainly looks great, you know. 
Nice. So. So maybe we can get back to that guy. Yeah, let's go back yeah. over and we'll talk with uh, with Matthew. He's busy all the time. Yeah, he's Matthew's there, right? We'll break him away. Yeah. I'm gonna jump in here. Maybe. Uh, oh. And this is just as we're waiting. This is. Uh, Go piano, kind of for uh, you know people starting or that want a lot of capability and a small affordable instrument. There's that, and as you're seeing here again, is is Zen Beats in kind of a keyboard view. But you know, also on Android devices and iOS devices, you can share the same the song and move from one to the other, which is is pretty amazing to be able to work on a phone, but then also move over to computer. Then you can, then you can, can uh, and then you have your mic. Yeah, I'm gonna um, ask you over to my. Yeah. Can you clip on the mic right there. Let's clip it on. Yeah. Just clip that to your beard. Yeah. To my beard? Right. Perfect. Uh, right there. You got good. audio? We good? So how's it been to CES? CES has been fantastic. It is, it's amazing getting to show people that there is a sleeping musician in everyone and anyone can make a beat regardless of your previous musical history or no musical history. Do you yourself make music, sir? Yeah, so I try to use... Uh, uh, there's Cubase, there's, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a bunch, but they're a little bit difficult to use. Well, they are, and they're all fantastic applications, but they're aimed at full-on professional use. There are colleges that teach you how to use these apps. Even uh, Apple, Ableton Live. Ableton Live, another fantastic app, but once again, aimed at professionals. I want to show you guys how anyone can make music with just their index finger. Let's get into it. So this is Zen Beats. It's, as uh, I think Brian may have mentioned, it is cross-platform, and it's free to download on any device. Whatever device you've got in your pocket, chances are you can go get it from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Let's get into how it works. Now, if you're brand new to music and you want to just dive right in, we've got in-app lessons that cover all the basics from, you know, making music using the Loop Browser, building a beat from scratch. The lessons will walk you through the process. Since I'm here, let's just go ahead and dive right in. Let's start a brand new song. I'm gonna hit a, a new song button from the home screen. That's gonna give me my drum grid and my on-screen instruments. These how are- How many tracks you can have? As many tracks as you want. We, uh, how many what? Uh, how many different instruments? And you're kind of unlimited all of, it's, I'll show you. So when you start a new song, you've got a drum machine. If you've got a touch device, you can record and tap out a beat. Let's say you're not even there yet. You haven't practiced, it's not your thing. Just hit the play button and you can go to all your sounds and you can easily enable a kick drum. You can also swipe and make music with gestures. Got the basis of a beat going. Let's add some stuff to spice it up. Cool. Now I've got this beat going and this is in our app mode called Loop Builder. Loop Builder is all about being free and creating ideas. This drum loop is gonna play forever unless I explicitly press stop. Let's move on and add some more stuff. So you can add unlimited tracks in Zen Beats. We have audio tracks, instrument tracks, drum tracks like we're on now, and some mixing tracks like sends, track templates, and song parts if you wanna grow your song out. Let's start with audio tracks. With audio tracks in Zen Beats, you can record your own audio from a microphone, meaning so, or plug in your guitar or bass. I don't have a guitar or bass, and you don't want to hear me sing. So we're gonna go with the next thing you can do, which is import audio. Touch here, you'll get your loop browser. Your loop browser has access to thousands of loops organized by type, 808, bass, drums. Let's just layer another drum beat here. I can browse, audition, and if I like it, just drag and drop it, boom. The next type of track we have are instruments. Zen Beats comes with eight keyboard-based instruments, um, including a, a very versatile synth and sampler. Now, if you're on Mac, PC, or iOS, you also have access to external plugins. Thank you, VST, 2, 3, and audio units. Let's mix some stuff with some internal Zen Beat sounds. I'm gonna pick my favorite instrument, Sampleverse. Sampleverse is a synth and a sampler combined. Without going too heavy on you, you can touch the record button here and you can actually multi-sample any instrument, guitar, bass, or uh, violin, and play it on your keys. I've got a basic synth loaded here. Now, 
Obviously, I'm playing a nice keyboard. You don't need one. You can bring one up here and play on screen. This could be in your Android phone right now. It says on it. This can be on your Android phone right now. Now, when playing on a phone, it can be difficult to hit the keys on a touch screen. Or if you're like me, I play guitar. I don't play keys. We have a nice feature called Key Lock. You can pick your key, pick your mode, no mistakes. Another cool thing about this is MPE. That's a very geeky term, but let me show you what it means. That means multi-polyphonic expression. You're used to doing uh, pitch bending like this on the keyboard. With MPE, it's per finger pitch. And other effects like filtering. Let's record something. Done recording, loop it, and go. So what I've done here is I've just created the first part of the song. These are loops, these are song parts. You can think of song parts like a, an intro, a verse, a chorus, a bridge, you name it. You can have unlimited tracks and Zen beats and unlimited song parts. So you can put as many ideas you have together and then trigger and play them on the fly. You can play loops individually or entire columns like so. So if I want to start adding a new song part, I can just start dragging and dropping. Or recording, like so, easy as that. Now, in addition to making music with loops, we also have a linear mode. What happens if you make an entire song in loop mode, but you change your mind, you want to maybe get it in linear mode? Let me show you. I'm going to open up a basic template here. It's got some song parts on already. I'm going to touch my record button and I'm going to go to record the timeline. This allows you to remix all your loops on the fly and multi-track them in the background. We'll start with just this little hi-hat here. Bring in some bass. Now let's drop in the hit. Let's bring in this whole column. Everything is being multi-tracked in the background. And switch the timeline. And there's your multi-track sequence. All this can run on the phone? Yes, all of it. All of it. So everything I essentially showed you is on, it's the same software on the iPhone, Android, iPad, Chromebook. Now let's say, okay, we've got something, we want to save it. When you save in ZenBeats, you can save on your device. You can save to Google Drive or OneDrive, two of the most popular connected cloud accounts. Um, after you save it, Maybe, you know, maybe this is something I made on my phone and maybe I now want to transfer it to my PC or my Mac. We also have built-in transfer functions. So if your devices are online, you can wirelessly send anything you've done on your phone to your tablet or your PC. The Wi-Fi here is very slow, so it took a little time, but yeah, I can see my iOS device there. I hit select, transfer, and it sends all your content over to your other devices. So you can start a beat on your phone, finish it out on your PC, or maybe you start a really good idea on your PC, but you gotta go. Send it to your phone and work on it while you're on the road. That is ZenBeats. You can get it today on the iOS App Store, Google Play, or the Mac PC versions available at Roland.com. How much? Ah, thank you. For the mobile versions start at $14.99. The desktop versions are $49.99. And we also have an in-app store. You can buy individual loop packs based on every genre and subgenre you can hope for. Real rolling sounds like the classic 808, T, uh, TR-707, TR-909, and more. All these are individually sold for $4 a pack. Now, if you're the type of cat that wants to get everything all in one, we also <coughs> offer the Ultimate Unlock, which will give you a ZenBeats Unlock on Mac, Windows, Android, iOS, even Chromebooks that support Android apps, and also give you all of our content in the in-app store today. And uh, you can input any keyboard that's MIDI or USB yes. or... So as far as hardware, we support any hardware your device supports. So if you have a USB sound card you want to use, hook it up, choose it in the settings and go. As you see here, I'm using a Roland System 8 as my audio device for my PC right now. It's just uh, like a MIDI controller. Yep, or... and you go to your MIDI and set a MIDI controller or any audio device. We work, we work with everything.
What can you output to a MIDI also? I'm sorry? Can you output to MIDI you also? Can, you can output MIDI, you can export patterns as MIDI, and also let's say you want to collaborate with someone who's using a full professional DAW like Pro Tools or Logic. The share button will also allow you to create stems of anything you're doing in one touch. You can do full uncompressed wave, a lossless flack, or aug. It'll render every track as its own wave, so you can drag and drop it into any full-fledged DEW of your choice. All the sounds from Roland, all available. Tons of sounds from Roland. If you're on the, the Mac or Windows version, as I mentioned, we also support VST plugins, which I highly recommend everyone to check out Roland Cloud. All of their entire legacy is right here, down to XV5080, down to the Jupiters, the Juno 106s, the D50s, all <coughs> the best recreations of these instruments in software form. But you have to subscribe to those separately? Those are a separate subscription. Zenbeats is its own thing. The pricing is for a one-time license fee for Zenbeats. Uh, once again, $14.99 on iOS or Android, $49.99 on Windows or Mac. So here's a, this is an iPad Pro. Yeah. So there's something that I heard about the iOS devices having uh, um, less lag than Android. Is that true or not? Well, it honestly depends on the device, but overall, iOS, um, they, they definitely they can have better audio than some Android devices. We're using a Google Pixel here that has very good touch latency. Is the same like an iPhone? I'd have to AP them side by side to see. I, 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 I use MBeats on a Samsung myself, and it works fantastic too. And you say Chromebooks, so that means every Chromebook is because they're Android. Every Chromebook that supports Android apps. There are still some older legacy Chromebooks that don't have Android app support, and that we can't work on. But every anything that Android does have the Google Play Store on, you can download it, and same thing. All right, is there any chance there might be a keyboard coming out with a, like an Android uh, touchscreen in the middle there and then supporting this directly on the keyboard? I don't know anything this about that. This is just that. the beginning, right? We're just, we're just at the start. I'm the product manager for the software. That is what I focus on. And we just dropped version 1.1. This is brand new. We have lots of exciting things in store. Please stay tuned. And on iOS, there's a bunch of music apps, more than an Android, but you, are you the best? Is this the best system out there? Of course in we're the best, absolutely. This is the coolest, easiest to use? I mean, as, as a product manager, i potentially biased, but yes, I think it is the easiest, easiest app to use today. And it's the only app that you can get real rolling sounds in. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank Thanks. Maybe oh, sorry. I can get the, the yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah. He's going to check her out over there to finish the video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, hold on to that. It's kind of stuck in my back. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. All right, awesome. Thanks. What, uh, what's that? I'll give you the card, just in one minute. I'm just gonna go right over here. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. of innovation at Roland. It's probably the coolest uh, music company in the world.
Welcome to CES 2020. This is a Microchip Technology booth. My name is Wayne Freeman, and we're going to show you all about smart, connected, and secure technology. So you've got lots of demos around here. Let's go. <laughs> okay. We've got lots of demos around here. In fact, let's talk to this gentleman here about the smart steering wheels. Hey. Hi. This is uh, Farrakh Boxy from Microchip. Okay. And uh, what I'm showing is uh, a new automotive technologies for HMI. Uh, there's two technology trends that we're addressing over here. Uh, we'll start out with the first one, which is uh, right in the center over here. As you can see, the screen sizes are getting much larger. Uh, 8 and 10 is not standard anymore. You're talking about 15, 17, 19 inches, right? Uh, when those sizes get really large, you actually lose a lot of real estate that you have for mechanical buttons and encoders. So what we've done is given an ability to bring the encoders into the display. As an example, we actually have a passive knob over here that's part of the active display, and there's really no electronics behind it. It's just a mechanical contraption, as you can see. Adhere it right on the screen, and you're able to get really good encoding out of the system. So uh, it's a capacitive technology? The, the solution here itself inherently is capacitive in nature. But this here is just another mechanical passive piece that you have adhered on top. It's taking advantage of the capacitance in order to figure out what the encoding angles are. All right? Uh, what we also have over here is a display on knob. An alternative to a knob on display, we have another way of actually implementing a knob, uh, a display over a knob kind of a solution. And you can touch on it and uh, control various uh, features. Is there, so you do the technology that's to do with the knob or the display or? This is actually still capacitive. Everything here is still capacitive in nature. We're using one of our uh, MXT devices in order to develop this solution. Uh, What's happening with these displays so here? The other technology that we were going to show is the, the trend that the automotive guys are looking at developing ultra-wide sensors, ultra-wide displays. Uh, well, we've developed the solutions that will allow you to create different aspect ratios from 7 to 1, 5 to 1, 8 to 1, up to 45 inches using a single chip controller. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to start seeing in a couple years where the OEMs actually are asking for pillar to pillar kind of a solution. Uh, we're enabling that kind of a solution using our MXT controller. Products. So it's uh, controlling the touch screen? It's controlling the touch screen here as well. So you're interacting touch over here. Here's an example. We have the, the side view mirror. Uh, you can zoom and pan, right? It kind of gives you the ability to bring everything inside the car, improves your aerodynamics, improves your fuel efficiencies. Same thing applies over here as well. So we have the ability to touch at all these different areas and you can go all the way up to 45 inches with a single chip controller. All right, uh, single chip, capacitive touch controller. Yes, special functions yeah. around that. Correct. Especially for automotive, you need to have uh, reliability. Uh, for automotive, you actually do need reliability and functional safety. So we're also integrating a lot of functional safety, which is running diagnostics while the acquisition is being done uh, without actually compromising the latency or okay. the performance of the system itself. All right, and then I'll check out some of the other systems around Absolutely. here. Absolutely. All right, maybe uh, we can hang over the, the, the microphone. Um, so I'm just coming over here. Oops. You can get mic, mic top right here. Hey there, yeah, we met uh, last year in chat. Yeah. yeah. So you can have it right sure. there. Maybe you can uh, uh, yeah, snap, if you snap, get it, for snap me, it yeah. on right, sure. right there. Cool. Yeah. Okay, and then just uh, stick back yeah. on my belt or uh, something. In the front, sir. Oh, front, in the front's front, better yeah, for it's a blue. Interference, otherwise. Oh, got it, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so what are you showing around here? Sure. So um, we're showing off some things that you can do with Max Touch that you can't quite do on your cell phone or your tablet. This is a ruggedized tablet from a company called Juniper Systems, and I can grab um, a, a normal wooden pencil. So this isn't your your two, your hundred dollar Apple pencil. This is a two cent uh, <laughs> number two pencil from Staples or or, uh, or Office Depot. I'm going to make the situation even harder by grabbing a leather glove that's also not conductive. Wood, of course, doesn't conduct electricity or electrons either. The lead in the pencil is conductive. 
effective. So I can take advantage of our very high SNR, or signal to noise ratio, and grab this and write on a capacitive touchscreen. It's amazing all of the amount of technology we put into play just to get a two cent pencil to work on a touchscreen, but this is uh, amazing physics here. We're relying on a very small amount of charge displacing from the touch sensor. Those small amount of electrons jump into the lead of the pencil. They don't have anywhere to go. There's just more electrons in the sensor than there is in the pencil, so a few of them will jump across. We can count them and track them accurately and reliably on a running Windows uh, tablet here with a noisy charger. Our CES demos are all kind of powered to Together. Tremendously noisy. Um, also in a floating state, it works great as well. But um, in, the, in the noisy state, the noise is often much bigger than the level of signal. So uh, being able to pull off something like this is, uh, is an impressive feat. So it's in a, in a uh, capacitive touchscreen uh, firmware and uh, the algorithm. There, and there's stuff? hardware and firmware. So um, we're, we're leveraging um, some patents that we have that allow us to sense touch uh, differentially. Um, which helps eliminate the common mode noise from coming into the controller. And then we have some sophisticated algorithms, many of which are patented to avoid noise and then filter noise that is broad spectrum and can't be, uh, can't be filtered. And you have some more touch screen demos around here? Absolutely. So um, this is uh, another couple of demos showing the use of a thick glove uh, on a touch screen. So let's find the calculator. Uh, here it is. And we can show that you can still use a uh, calculator reliably and accurately through uh, the presence of a, of a thick glove. There it is. Nice. Yeah. So this, it's, um, it's hard to do. This is very hard to do. Um, it, it effectively looks like a hovering uh, finger. In fact, if I take the glove off and I hover my, my finger above the sensor, yeah. you can see that we can tell the difference between a glove and a hovering touch. My hovering finger doesn't uh, detect a touch, but when my finger is in a glove, then and only then does it report uh, the touch. All right, pretty sure around here. Sure, so this is a brand new chip. This is called the MXT2952TD. So it's a uh, different a different uh, chip, new technology from us. It's using a, a, another patent of ours called uh, differential mutual sensing. I showed you before, we're working with one very thick finger. There's other controllers in the market that can do a single thick finger as well. What we're able to do though is work with now multi-touch. Thick gloves, we can rotate, we can zoom, we can pinch, and I've got two very thick gloves at play. This is something that's really quite revolutionary, especially when you consider the fact that this is an eight millimeter cover glass equivalent. This monitor originally had 1.1 millimeter glass. We took a six millimeter piece of glass with an air gap and glued this whole thing together so that now it looks like eight millimeters of glass. Just sensing a bare finger through such a thick lens is a challenge. Adding a thick glove on top of that, now that's really tough. Nice. Um, and uh, what's happening here? This is um, Garmin uh, Marine. It's a marine GPS and fish finder. We can uh, support lots of water on the system. So picture rain coming down, you're on a boat, it's very rainy, no false touches, but you still want to be able to use the GPS and you want to be able to use it with multi-touch. So you expect that your multiple touches should still work reliably and accurately. Now let's picture that there's a tsunami and big ocean waves are starting to come and crash up on the boat. Now we've got 5% salt water. 5% is the saltiest water you find in oceans. Most ocean water is 3.5%. As water gets saltier and saltier, it becomes more and more conductive and becomes frankly a nightmare for a capacitive touchscreen. If you spray this water on your cell phone or on your tablet, 5% saline, it'll go crazy. Uh, human blood um, saline solution in the medical environment is only 0.9% uh, saline. It's frankly pretty easy for us. 5%, this is a big challenge. So spray this on, we notice that there's no false touches at all. And now I can still, even with moving salt water around my finger, I can still use the touch screen. So that means that our fisherman who's on the boat in the tsunami can navigate home safely to his family, thanks to Max Touch technology. Tsunami is a pretty um, uh, challenging thing. I hope, I hope our I fisherman hope is not happen. out there on his own in a little boat, but if it comes along while he's fishing, he can now uh, use Garmin If it's GPS. out in the deep sea, it's okay. That's right. As far as I remember. <laughs> All right. So um, here is our uh, 3D gesture technology that we're showing. This is a light switch simulation. We can show the range here that the light switch is just woken up with this kind of a range. I can now uh, turn on the lights um, with, <laughs> uh, I can now use uh, an air wheel gesture to turn the lights back on, to dim the lights, 
or turn them back up, make them a little bit brighter. Turn Is this them on capacitive the technology Also again? capacitive, yes. Everything that we do now in microchip for touch sensing or air gesture sensing is all capacitive based. So we're relying on electric fields here. So this, same, this is a, a kind of a demonstration board showing a light switch. Um, this same technology has been integrated into several uh, shipping products. This is a little video wall showing a Jaguar moonroof that uses it to open and close the moonroof, a Sony speaker, a smart mirror from Burbank where you can turn on and off the lights, and a Muriel photo frame in the lower right. We have that frame in the home uh, section where you can change artwork all with a, a gesture of your hand. This is um, a speaker set from Cambridge Audio. Uh, from the UK that has uh, integrated the same gesture technology to control the speaker. So as my hand approaches, you'll see the speaker is just lit up. So now these capacitive touch buttons have been revealed. I can play music or pause music, and then I can also switch to the next track all without having to touch the speaker. This is on the market. I'm sorry? It's for sale in the market. That's correct, yes. Um, I think $250 on Amazon. They also have batteries in them too, left and right, and they run for several hours off of batteries. Nice. And you so, have more and more stuff. Can you just uh, oh. put this on the other side? Yes. Because there's interference sure. in my things. Uh, so yeah. what do you show here? So this one is uh, kind of the integration of everything I've shown you, our 2D and 3D technology merging together. So here we have a system. This could be full screen um, album art if you listen to music. It could be full screen uh, GPS or maps if you're using it to navigate. When your hand comes in range, now the GUI changes and you can see your settings buttons. So we can now um, navigate through menus and choose which menu we want to go into, all with using gestures. I can go down and we can switch through some slides. I'm controlling this all without even touching the system. Think about a medical environment where doctors, as soon as they touch a surface, they have to wash their hands again. Now you can scroll through x-ray images, you can zoom in, zoom out, all without having to touch the system. Is this, uh, all this stuff is brand new, is already, except for those speakers and other bunch of uh, things in the market? So yes, this chip is, uh, has been shipping for a few years. We have a new generation of chip. This is now automotive grade. Uh, and there's uh, a new version that's both automotive and industrial grade that's been released to mass production um, uh, middle of last year. Uh, so that's just now um, getting designed into new products. Into um, new cars. In, into new cars and, and other kinds of systems. Getting all these Jesper stuff in the cars. That's right. Uh, this is a technology demonstration where we're merging the gesture chip and our MaxTouch 2D touchscreen technology together. So this is a multi-chip chip set um, that we're demonstrating as a technology to, to drive the new use cases. All right, and this is a f form? Finally, you've seen um, our, I think, some of our knob on display technology um, in the automotive use case. This is showing a home appliance environment. So we have an oven above us, and then we have uh, an oven below. Left knob controls the top oven, right knob controls the bottom oven. We can set our cooking mode, touch in the middle, and then change the temperature of the oven click it again and now we change our time that we want to cook at and then click it and we've now started cooking all with uh, using a very ergonomic And knob. these are fixed permanently or it can stick on and stick off? They're, they're stuck in place. We use a, uh, a 3M automotive grade double stick tape. Our Max Touch controller needs to know the size, the shape and position of the knob and it's basically <coughs> a software defined knob. It's a standard touch sensor. There's no special sensor pattern uh, design required. Um, the, you just need a special controller to, uh, to handle the knob. All right. That's a lot of cool touch technologies right here. Very good. This also? Yeah, this is uh, one of our partners called Greyhill. So I just showed you knob on display. This is the opposite here. This is display on knob, where Greyhill is taking a max touch touch screen and integrating it onto a mechanical knob. This knob feels wonderful. This is a really great uh, sensation, that Hall effect sensor, so kind of traditional mechanical knob, but they're bringing it into the modern era by adding a touch screen. So I can swipe between different modes. Here I can change uh, my fading. Uh, if I swipe this way, I can now, I'm on FM. I can swipe again, I'm on AM, I can change my frequency. Here, I'm on satellite radio, just as one of many different nice. use case examples. And this is showing a, a trend in many different industries moving towards in-mold electronics, where electronics can physically be mounted, and including touch sensors, behind plastic that gets thermoformed into different shapes. So imagine an automotive environment where you can feel where the volume controls are or the temperature controls without having to look at them. 
And here you've got haptic feedback as well. So I can feel the sensation. I know something's happening. And you can get audio feedback from the system as well. It's vibrating? It's vibrating. So give, give that a feel. Whoa. It's vibrating the whole surface? It vibrates. Uh, lo there's I'm... some localization. So you get a little sensation kind of near where your finger is it pressing. It's cool. Um, some of these are force enabled as well. So if you touch lightly, nothing happens. But if you press a little harder, it feels like you're pressing a button. All right. So this is another growing trend called in mold electronics. Nice. And here the CES 2020. And uh, you're launching a new smart glass right here. Hey. <laughs> Hey, Jarbox, how are you, my man? So, um, so which are these? Yeah, so at CES, we're actually announcing two new products or showing two new products. This is the M4000. A lot of folks might be familiar with Fusix M400, which is an enterprise-based pair of smart glasses used for warehouse picking, used for field service applications, remote support, those kinds of things. This is the same device, but here it sports a see-through optical system. So. The cool thing about this is I'm working, I'm seeing the real world, so maybe I'm picking parts out of a out of a bin, let's say, and I'm seeing the parts and I'm seeing what I'm supposed to pick, so I don't have to think through what I saw in a in a touchpad over here that says pick five out of bin three. I can literally see pick five and I'm looking at bin three, and when I look over at bin two, it says pick two, and so you can never get it wrong. It's really a much more accurate way to pick. It also can be safer because it's optically see-through and you're seeing the environment around you. The other product that we're showing at CES is Smart Swim. So this one is um, a smart glass for swimming. Yes, that's correct. And it's stable in the water? Oh yeah, no doubt about it. In fact, I, you know, swimming it can be a relatively boring thing. I mean, you're in, you're in the pool. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. All right. There's some, uh, some. Okay. There's some demos over there. Yeah. So. Um, so swimming, swimming can be a little bit boring. Yeah. With these glasses, these smart glasses, you can actually even watch Netflix now or movies. Um, you can watch training videos while you're in the pool. It'll do your lap counts, etc. Yeah. Let's go right over here with the, the smart swim. So you have it um, waterproof. The whole thing is waterproof. Yeah, in fact, Craig here can give you a little bit more information about it. Craig, sure. you want to give us the quick? Oh, sure, the quick uh, five-second tour. Well, this is this is music smart swim. It's yeah. a head-up display for swimming. It renders an image of your cell phone on your eye while you're swimming. It attaches to your goggle. We support over 20 different brands. And basically it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and it's got a lot, uh, accelerometer and gyroscope for lap training. It'll run for five hours to seven hours, depending on the application. So these are the kind of the screens you can have? These are some of the screens for lap training. So it basically replaces your sport watch. It's like all the information is real-time delivery of the information as you are swimming or training. But imagine watching videos, streaming real-time YouTube videos as you are training. Training videos, chasing the Olympic record line, or maybe you just want to be entertained while the process of healing your body is happening. The coach can give you real-time information? Yes, yes. And it's a full-color display. Yes. And and you can uh, you could be swimming across the the channel. Yes. And you can have GPS? GPS, so you can give you a course outline and a course map. You can follow the course map as you're swimming. It also, this is Alligator Lighthouse Swim here. This came right out of our system. And the lines are very clean. It's a very clean GPS system. I don't so know, I don't know, if you know what it's like when you're doing, when you're doing open water swim. You swim, if you, swim you stop direction. and you look up, and you try to find a buoy, and then you correct. So. This is a straight line. It's a beeline to the buoy with That's these glasses like, uh, on. That's like the guy who has this on is going to win every time. He's going a lot less distance. <laughs> now that's well, going to get lost. That's for sure. <laughs> but is it allowed? Uh, it's on certain events, they allow it. Uh, any of the sanctioned events, no. If it's a national championship, no. You can't wear it in competitions. But they might update the whole system. That now. might change. They might say that everybody has that to wear change. one. Most of the open water events that I go to, they embrace it. They love the technology. They want to see it out there. You're about connecting people. Think about safety. If I could broadcast a message to every swimmer, if there's a problem on the course, you got to get out of the water, that kind of thing. Nice. So how did you make it waterproof? A lot of work. A lot of work? <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, if you think about it, that's everything that's inside of a phone today and yes. all the work that they had to go through on a phone to make it waterproof, we had to do the same sort of thing. It's Android. Yeah, it's Android based, right. The thing yes. about this is though, it's worn. 
right? So there's a bunch of other constraints that a phone doesn't have. The phone is a fairly mechanical device. It's square, it's got like square shoulders on it. It's a lot easier to secure. This is, took a lot of work and it, this has to be flexible at the same time because it's got to fit different users, different user head sizes. So there's a lot of tech that goes into the... And with the little um, elastic band there, it stays, uh, stays put where it needs yeah. to be. Every goggle is a little different, but pretty much that's the basic concept. You, you bungee it on. You can bungee it on to a pair of kayaking goggles. You can bungee it on to a snorkeling mask, so we can go snorkeling tour. Imagine diving? Imagine a snorkeling tour, not diving. It's one meter down for eight hours. But a snorkeling tour is you're on the surface. It's all surface swimming. So put a GPS course and show people where they want to go for the hot spots on a snorkeling tour, and you just follow the GPS map and away you go. Nice. Does so it have a camera? No. We have a camera as an accessory. You can buy this specific camera and, and then that gets an that's inside the app there's an app so we have a carousel you scroll a carousel and you pick the camera app and that camera app runs with this camera nice. so you can put this camera on the back of your head and you look down you see the horizon line so I can see where I'm swimming without stopping I can nice. put it on the back of my boat and a kayak and I can paddle while the hands free and I can see what's behind the boat without turning around to see what's going on back there so nice. there's different applications. You Bluetooth can headphones also, so while you're swimming, you've got audio, you're watching the videos, it's all kind of a tied like in AV system. I'd like to have all kinds of information about the fish that I'm seeing. Yes, Is they poisonous or not? Yes. That'll yes. come, that'll come. And how far the sharks are. Yeah, well, that too, someday. Someday all that stuff, right? Some makes people sense. are a bit nervous when they snorkel. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Look at something and tell me what it is. Like a warning, don't touch this uh, jellyfish. Right, something. Okay. Yes, yes, that's all right. a great application. Cool, all right. So let's go to the, M the 4000 right here. So you have a lot of uh, coverage at this show. A partner of music is called Ride On. These are ski goggles. They use our waveguides inside of them. While you're on the hill, it's telling you how fast you're going down the hill. All this information floats way down in front of you. So you're not refocusing on the hill and then the information and then the hill. You know where your friends are because they can all be linked together. Listen to music through these guys. So this is a heads-up display for ski goggles. So it's not the. It's a. It's a new. Pri it's a different pry. It's not the the blade in there. It's not. It's not the blade. It uses a lot of blade components actually. As you might imagine, they can be pretty flexible to be used elsewhere. But it's a lot of the tech that's in a blade, but it's in a form factor. Is it big market goggle. or is it just starting? Well, it's, it's brand new. This thing's just started shipping here in the January time frame. Wow, so it's just in time for this winter. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Cool, awesome. So let's go to um, the M4000. Yeah, so this is the M4000. I'm going to let Warren tell everybody about it. Warren, can you give us a kind of a tour, please? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Warren. I'm showing off the M4000, our newest uh, M-series device featuring our Vizix Waveguide and Display Engine. So they are on right now, huh? Yeah, I'm wearing it. Uh, I can see the screen, I can see the camera, uh, and I can see through. This is a Here's really big waveguide. It's the whole glass, right? Yeah, it's horizontal, 16 by 9, uh, NH NHD resolution. And it, it's really crisp. Like, I, there's lots of lights coming in, and it's not really intruding on what you I'm seeing. Take it off? Yeah. You can take off. I the, can take off yeah. the helmet. Yeah. So, um, so you, a big market. Can you hold it right here? Yeah. Sure. So, a big market for uh, music is the enterprise, right? So, this is um, the latest, the best for that market, uh, right? Correct. This is the second product we're building around our Qualcomm relationship, and this is an enterprise product, and it will be our first like pure enterprise product that has a waveguide display. So, it's. Um, the XR1 CPU is in there? Yeah, the Qualcomm XR1. Uh, we're really happy with this trip. It's been successful in the M400. We're happy to use it again in the 4000. Is the ARM Cortex A53 quad core or something like that? It's a quad core. Quad core, powerful 64 bit, octa core, uh, with a, even a GPU that you can use and everything? Yeah, it's got graphics processor built in, AI engine built in. It's, it's loaded with tech. It's the latest sort of silicon that you could get for a modern phone. So the biggest part of your business is the enterprise, right, so far? That's right, and the, the, a good example is this use case that we have right here. When Warren puts this the hat on, what he can do is he can walk up to a piece of equipment, look at a QR code that's sitting on the gear, and with that it gives you the work instru instructions to assemble this particular job. And the task here is, this is a server box, and he's got to make connections between this box and this box. And the work instructions in the glasses right now are saying connect. Well, why don't you tell us why? Yeah. 
It says connect the blue cable to A3 to B11. See nice. how it lights up? Yeah. You got it right? Then, the next one. Yeah. And I could use voice or just use the buttons and touchpad to move on to the next. I like using the buttons. Uh, step two, <coughs> connect red cable to A11 to B3. And what's nice is these work instructions are floating right over the work, so it's not like he's got to look someplace else. He's looking where he's working. So, you actually have a lot of customers in the enterprise. It's the bulk of Usix's business today. Enterprise and warehousing, logistics, field service applications, remote support applications. You think about it, you got a worker in the field, he's using his hands. He's doing a job, let's say, that he's not done before. Um, maybe he's done it once or twice and can't remember everything. So he can pull up the work instructions like you just saw here, and they come up step by step. If he's lost and can't figure out what he's doing, he can then make a remote support call to an expert that's sitting back at the office. The camera runs, it's a 13 megapixel camera in the front. This camera will stream over the Wi-Fi connection out through the internet to the expert. And the guy on the other end says, Frank, let me give you a hand here. So he's looking and he literally can, almost like reaching in and teleporting over, circle items, do this, do this next, unscrew this, all of that stuff with the, the remote export helping out without the remote guy having to get on a car and go and help him to do the work. And you totally have this happening in a big way. Oh, there's, and you've been there's ha this has been happening for you for a few years now, right? It's really starting to move though. In 2020, you'll see a banner year for Vuzix. The number of companies that are starting to deploy this because the ROIs are so significant is amazing. So yeah, it's finally augmented reality in, in the form of smart glasses is starting to take the market by storm. And you have some uh, partners over there providing, uh, partnering with you on the, on the solution? Yes, that's Maybe right. uh, UB Max? We have a bunch of them here actually, yeah. some examples. Yeah. UB Max here. Yeah. They're our partners out of Germany. This young lady is stateside. And you want to give us a quick tour? Sure. So, uh, hello. Hi. I'm Carly Kroll and I'm with UBMX Inc., which is the US side of our company. We do digital work instructions for the industrial workers. So, we have a whole creator tool where you're able to do step by step workflows and then they get put onto the smart glasses so that the workers would actually have hands-free information in real time. So imagine watching a YouTube tutorial like when you're trying to fix your dishwasher but you're holding your phone or balancing your tablet. Instead the idea is that workers would have videos, pictures, text, all hands-free on the smart devices so that they can have their safety gloves on, have their hands on their equipment and tools and be able to go through an entire assembly, whether it's an airplane engine or something small. And you have uh, real customers, uh, yes. this is happening. We it's have not over, just like We have cool over 300 tech. customers worldwide, ranging in automotive manufacturing with BMW, Audi, Porsche, John Deere. We also have in logistics, we work with DHL and Coca-Cola Hellenic Bottling Company in multiple countries and locations. So they are really using it? Yes, they They're are. They're not just experimenting? Absolutely, no. We've uh, full rollouts in multiple countries and continents. And one of our other big things besides the work instructions for inspection and manufacturing is the logistics aspect. So we integrate to warehouse management systems so that orders would come in the field view of the worker and they would be able to pick and put, whether they're driving a forklift or they're doing it by hand, much quicker and with much more accuracy. And so... Amazon? Uh, Amazon is not one of our current customers, but Walmart is for logistics and DHL in Europe, US and Mexico. Nice, because uh, potentially it could be great in like a warehouse. Yes, for the uh, for like something like Amazon where they right. tell the yes. The Currently, guys to go Amazon around. has their own software that they like to use, but we work in every uh, many other warehouses around the world. Maybe they've exactly automated that. everything. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Well, the idea is, is not, so not doing, so although machines are extremely helpful, we believe in equipping the workers with wearables to keep them competitive with the robot workforce. So, and also allowing humans to interact with the machine colleagues that they have. And so another thing that we have is a remote support call. So yeah. being able to call an expert wherever they are at any time, uh, you know, or country, doesn't matter and get feedback. So rather than having an expert need to 
fly um, or drive on site to do a repair, they can now do it in real time. So 350 BMW dealerships in the US all use our software with a smart glass device in order to do repairs on BMW. And so it makes the repairs quicker, people get their cars back faster. And the expert might be in Germany. They could be in Germany, exactly. And it's, then uh, boom, uh, it's actually really happening. Yes. It, it's really being used. Correct. And uh, I guess it must be fun for the workers who have the job that use these, right? They're I like think part cool. of it is it can be fun and enjoyable. Um, other things is, is it actually helps make their lives easier. They have less wasted time, less wasted movement. They feel that they are more productive at their jobs, and so it actually makes their work-life balance better. Nice. Awesome. Glasses, they feel like they're Iron Man often, too. Yeah. yeah. Super special with all this cool tech to help get the job done. You're really helping making uh, those, these jobs more exciting. I think so. I think less errors, too. So people feel better about, I didn't get it wrong. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so then you also have a Zoe meet right here. Yes. Maybe we can we can join, jump in. Uh, and uh, right here with a uh, Zoe meet. Maybe. Uh, hi. So hi. so what's the latest with Zoe meet? So um, the latest is speech intelligence. So, so we've been uh, doing a speech to text uh, on the glasses. You can do a meeting. You see a live text. But what happens after the text? It's a story. You can retrieve it. But there's more to it. You can check the engagement rate, you can check uh, who said what, um, and keywords triggers could be exported into your MS Teams. It's a collaboration. The future of work is distributed, everybody's everywhere. Wear your glasses and be together with the team. So you're making meetings more exciting? Exactly. Um, more interesting, more productive. Get more out of your meetings, so never forget what you said anymore. And you can search through uh, the whole meeting. Yes, you can search. So I, for example, am terrible at taking notes. Uh, <laughs> In fact, you always go back and say, what, what, what? I can't remember what we were going to do there with this. Did he say 20 million or did he say 25 million? Yeah, and then I, I actually have those situations and I look through, oh yes, he actually said that. What was that technology he said? And um, also after the call, what we will do is go through it, lift up certain words, certain things we discuss together, the follow-ups, put it in the email, I send it back to them. Everybody's so impressed. Like, how did you remember all this? I didn't. So what you did. So at the Seatec, I was very excited about when you talked about translations. Yes. But you're still going to do it, right? We're still going to do it. For consumers, it's amazing. Uh, for enterprises, I would say wait a little bit because uh, the understanding is um, not good enough for you to reach a decision together, but it's good enough for you to go around and, hey, I understood what you said. That's amazing. So for consumers, yes, absolutely. Do you uh, Bluetooth an external microphone or you just record from the just, glass? Just record from the glass. The, it uh, understands everything that's happening in the room? Um, you might want to connect an external microphone. You can, right? There's Bluetooth. You can, there's all kinds. Of there's hundreds of Bluetooth mics that you could hook up <laughs> yeah. to this thing. And you know, you could have a center comm mic that was recording the whole room three dimensionally even. So yeah, there's lots of options to go with an external mic. You can put the lapel microphone on the speaker. Correct. Correct. Yes. And then uh, see right there. Yeah. But um, and then you use all kinds of APIs to get the speech to text. Um, we are also developing our own because for corporates it's very important. Uh, because uh, the general APIs will always miss the corporate. Uh, I always ask one thing. If you use a general speech engine, the CEO name is always wrong. <laughs> the CEO, the executives, your product names. And this is where we come in, working with the enterprise to ensure the most important things are captured. The I product mean, names. Yeah, the things that you discuss about that is specific to your company. Um, it doesn't matter if the, the accuracy of a general engine says 95% accuracy, but when it comes to your lingo, your corporate names, it, it, if the names are wrong, you're not capturing the correct things. So that, that's why we have focused specifically on enterprise solution and it's wonderful working with Vuzix because that's what the customers want. Nice. Yeah. So text to, uh, speech to text is a big deal. Yes, it is. Yeah? It's amazing actually. The guys on the other side of the booth, they're doing sign language communications. Very, very similar, but in this case it's for people with, with hearing yeah. impairments. Let's go around here. So, can you introduce? Yeah, this is Sign Glasses. And you know what? The best man is Nathan here. We'll let him. Yep, I'm with Sign Glasses. How are you, Nicholas? Hi, so what do you do? 
Okay, so what we do is we do real-time sign language interpretation and captioning through the glasses. Whoa. So our primary goal is to provide equal access to the deaf and hard of hearing community. Uh, there's millions of scenarios where they don't have access to a live sign language interpreter, you know, there wherever they're at, and we're able to connect them with the live sign language interpreter through our software. Is the sign language not international? Every country has different So we actually use live sign language interpreters, and so the software's built where we can do it internationally in any country. So every country has different sign language? Yep, that's correct. Why? Just different languages. <laughs> In America is American Sign good. Language. Very much like Italian, French, English. Yep, really? Exactly, yes. Yep. So the Italians they do this the whole time? Yep, yep, Italians. They do that in Argentina too. Okay. <laughs> so you can, uh, you can do that by machine learning or somebody's remotely looking in and typing in? So right now we use a live person. So they're, they're in a remote area, they're listening, receiving the audio, receiving a video feed, they sign and our software connects that interpreter through the View6 blades. And ah, able to see it in the glass. so in the classroom with three or four kids in the classroom, let's say, that need to have access to the signing. So what they do today, right, is you got this person who's doing the sign language on one side of the room, the professor's on the other side of the room, the whiteboard's in the middle, and the poor students going like this back and forth, Whoa. trying to follow it all. Now what happens is the students sitting there comfortably watching the professor, and next to the professor is the sign language of what's going on, so you can stay well connected to what's going on in the classroom. So it's about sign language in anything. Yep. Everything. Exactly. Yeah, so it, it works in every it situation. That, it solves that big line of sight struggle. So if I'm a deaf person, I don't have to try to look two places at once. I can look at my professor and then see the sign language interpreter in the glasses at the same time. Would it make sense to just have text? It, it's set up for real-time text, too. So we do both. And it just depends on the individual. If their primary language is sign language, they're obviously going to want a signer to be there with them. If their primary language is English and they just want to have a text captioning, we can provide that too. Is it more efficient to do sign language, or for certain for certain situations, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's working, or is just a concept it's, right no, now? No, it's working. It's live. We've got dozens of schools that are set up using it with their students right now, and then we've got a few companies that are using it for either deaf customers or deaf employees to help them with trainings and meetings and things like that. So you have a price per minute, or how does it work? Yeah, it's a subscription base because we actually provide the sign language service, and that all depends on, you know, how many minutes you're committing with us. Uh, we sell the hardware package at about fifteen hundred dollars, and then they own the equipment. So they'll have the glasses, the tablet, and the microphone. And then the other things are just kind of figured out depending on the needs. Are there any public venues that are using it right now? Pub yes. So the Pro Football Hall of Fame, they've got it in there. They've got a holographic theater. And if I'm a deaf person, I can walk in. And like a hearing person, I can put on the glasses and enjoy the, the theater moment that they have. Uh, Panasonic's a company we're working with who has deaf employees. They have to do trainings on plants and things like that where having a live person just isn't the best fit for that. And so we connect them through the glasses. Um, <coughs> when yeah, there's a big a event, examples. like uh, political speeches and stuff, right? Yep. You could you could have potentially like uh, 50 bad uh, of hearing people all wearing the glass and one interpreter for all of them. That's exactly right. Can you right. do that? Yep, we, we can. Yeah, we can. Because um, then it gets cheaper. They all share the price per minute, right? Yep, exactly. Yep, exactly. Because they always have sometimes a sign language on the side and the corner, but they can have it in the glass. And, and that's another good example of where, you know, normally the sign language interpreter has to be on the side, and they can't even be watching the political speaker because they're looking at their interpreter, and that's another area where the glasses would 